Once there was a severe thunderstorm, and that's how it all started. The huge purple lightning strikes the tall building of the shopping center, and the people who are in it begin to ask each other what is happening on the street. Is there a storm or an earthquake? What kind of rumble it is? Suddenly, the lights go out all over the building, and a little boy snuggles up to his father and says that he is very scared because it is too loud here. A drop of water falls on the shoulder of a man in a blue sweater, the boy's father, and he asks in surprise where the water could have come from. A low growl is heard behind him and the man slowly turns around, seeing in front of him a huge monster with blue skin, long white hair, red eyes and a long narrow tongue from which saliva drips onto the man's shoulder. People are screaming in panic that they need to run away from these monsters as soon as possible. A young man with black hair and dressed in a light green sweatshirt runs out of the building of the shopping center and tries to catch his breath, saying that it seems that no one is chasing him anymore. He sees a huge crowd of people on the street, looking at buildings that are being hit by purple lightning at the same time and filming everything on mobile phones. People don't understand what just happened, and the young man in the light green sweatshirt assumes that it's the end of the world. Such abnormal thunderstorms occurred that day at the same time in different parts of the earth. The buildings hit by these lightning bolts were soon turned into the lairs of terrible killer monsters and such places began to be called dungeons. Many countries have even sent military forces there to assess the threat and gather information. However, ordinary weapons were completely useless against these monsters, and in the end even the army couldn't handle this new problem. The officer orders his subordinates to retreat, but one of the soldiers shouts that there are still people left and they need to wait. He is told that there is no way to save them, because it is too late. Humanity was plunged into the abyss of despair, when suddenly their saviors appeared to people. A man in black clothes runs up to the soldiers, who asks them to be careful and duck down. He snatches a red card from his pocket and calls the Scarlet Knight to come to him with the gate card. A huge figure of a knight in armor appears in front of a man in black clothes, who begins to fight the monster. These were the so-called Awakened Ones, people who used special cards in battle, gate cards. The gate maps were developed in secret laboratories by scientists, who foresaw the appearance of dungeons in this world. Soon after their appearance, the Awakened Ones began to appear one after another, those who could control the power of the gate cards. Awakened as a result of their struggle with the monsters of the dungeons, they quickly became universal heroes. Admiring people take pictures of the Awakened Ones, who smile politely at the camera, holding their cards in their hands. Eventually, companies appeared that, in collaboration with the Awakened Ones, built their business on clearing dungeons. A man in a blue jacket shakes hands with a man in a black jacket. In a world where monsters living in dungeons pose a threat to people's lives every day, the awakened ones who were able to restrain them became the elite of society. A young man with glasses named Akita Hikaru is also one of the awakened and this is his third year working for a dungeon cleaning company. His father was killed by monsters and his mother was hospitalized. He only had a younger sister left and they didn't know what to live on. At some point, Akita Hikaru decided to take a test in order to find out if he himself was one of the awakened ones. The organizer calls number 87, and the young man in black glasses responds. The organizer orders him to bring his hand to the device with the card, and Akita Hikaru does it. However, nothing seems to happen. He doesn't understand what's going on. And one of the organizers, an elderly man, says that number 87 has no reaction with the card, it doesn't seem to be suitable for them. Another organizer says that something is still going on. A red window is displayed on the computer screen, which says that the lowest level of abilities has been detected. Compatibility with gate card 0, 1. The organizers are surprised that its compatibility is only 0, 1 and say that no one has ever received such a low score, but still the number 87 is accepted. Alkita Hikaru is given the lowest rank, F. Although he had received an awakened license, his rank was so low that no dungeon cleaning company would even consider hiring him. He barely made ends meet and worked part-time in a variety of places. And then one day a miracle happened. Alkita Hikaru's sister screams that the mail has arrived for her brother. The young man in black glasses is amazed that such influential people wrote to him and why they needed him. As it turned out, one of the largest dungeon cleaning companies called Clean Water has begun an active search for new staff. How happy he was when he found out that even someone like him was willing to hire. Approaching the office of the Clean Water Company, Akita Hikaru thinks that in such a serious job you should never relax, you need to put all your strength into it and then mom and sister will finally live in prosperity and happiness. When Akita Hikaru first arrived at the company, he had no idea that rank harassment and severe inequality in the team would be waiting for him there. A monster kills two awakened ones, and a girl in a brown suit and with long blonde hair arrogantly says that people like them are only a human shield for awakened rank A. Let them think that this way they train them to take the blows of monsters. Thus, a company called Pure Water recruited low-ranking people only so that they would protect the elite. 
the awakened of rank A. Employees with low ranks were only cannon fodder, expendable material, which after their death was replaced by the same awakened without special skills. Not only had the elite awakened of Ranka simply framed him and other ordinary awakened ones, he was also thrown to die in a dungeon with the strongest monster. A wounded Akita Hikaru whispers that he can't just die here, he doesn't want to die. At this time, a green glow appears next to him, which comes from the mouth of the monster. And so, when he was almost dead, a miracle happened again. Akita Hikaru finds himself in a white room, in the middle of which there is a pillar with a blue crystal floating above it and assumes that this is an altar. He holds out his hand to him. By touching the crystal, Akita Hikaru gained an amazing and rare ability to create an unlimited number of rare gate cards. A huge number of cards fly out of the bag on the belt of the young man with glasses, and he exclaims where he got so many cards from. If someone gets hold of such a huge deck of cards, they will become invincible. Akita Hikaru calls for a dark two-headed snake to appear, and a huge purple snake with two heads appears in front of him. The brunette exclaims that this is just an incredible power. His eyesight has also improved. Now he can determine the strength and abilities of his opponent with one glance. Now he sees absolutely everything. The color of the young man's eyes turns purple, and the pupils look like snakes. Akita Hikaru orders the dark two-headed snake to attack. He had reached a level of strength that no awakened person, even the highest ranks, had ever had before. And those who humiliated and framed him don't even know about it. A man in a black suit, one of the low-ranking awakened ones, shouts that they are all going to die because of Akita and asks him to stop. Akita Hikaru snatches out a card and summons a dark two-headed serpent with a gate card. Only he has an endless deck of cards, and he uses this power for revenge. May his revenge be accomplished. A company called Pure Water employs a lot of elite awakened high ranks. Hikaru Akita was so happy to get the job of his dreams and even in such a prestigious place. However, the reality turned out to be not at all as colorful for him as he had imagined. The action takes place in Tokyo, a grade C dungeon at level 9, which used to be the building of a famous pharmaceutical company. The low-ranking awakened ones walk through the dungeon and say that they seem to be in place, but the radar barely works, and the signal cannot be disassembled at all. Maybe they should go back to the others, because they definitely can't go any further. At this time, they realize that they are trapped, and goblins are jumping on them from behind. A black and blue window is displayed, in which it is written that this is a goblin, his class is humanoid, his character is hostile, rank F. The awakened ones scream in pain and call for help, but at this time, someone kills all the goblins with shots from behind. One of the men whispers happily that they are saved. A tall, broad-shouldered young man in a brown suit says with disdain that if they are not even able to cope with a goblin, then why are they being paid wages here at all? Akita Hikaru anxiously asks his comrades if they are okay. A dark-haired man in a gray jacket, a woman with short red hair in a black suit, and another awakened man with a low rank and a backpack on his back approach them. A dark-haired man in a gray jacket orders Naguchi to give him a situation report. A young man with red hair reports that four goblins were destroyed, no traces of a magic stone were found after death, and two low-ranking awakened were attacked. He believes that they will not help them in any way in further clearing the dungeon. Akita Hikaru asks them to return to a safe place because they have to help them. A dark-haired man in a gray jacket says that these two will be a dead weight for them and orders everyone to move out. The wounded low-ranking awakened beg to wait and not leave them here to certain death. Akita Hikaru asks to wait and at least heal their wounds a little. But a dark-haired man in a gray jacket shouts at him not to waste magic. Let him not forget that he will be punished if he uses at least one card without his orders. The bespectacled youth turns around and follows the elite awakened ones, thinking that he is very sorry, under the gaze of the wounded. A team of elite awakened ones, many of whom reached the highest a rank and awakened low ranks, including himself, were assembled to clear the dungeon. In dungeon clearing, people like him are just pathetic pawns of the elite awakened, who can be very easily replaced if anything happens. Akita Hikaru calls out to Naguchi and apologizes at the same time, he irritably asks what he needed. The young man asks him to give the workers from his group a weapon. Nagachi, in a rage, grabs his clothes and pulls him towards him, saying that they seem to have weapons anyway, so stop talking nonsense. In the arsenal of the Elite Awakened, there are not only the strongest gate cards, but also the best weapons that have been specially designed to fight monsters from the dungeons. However, bullets for such weapons use magic stones, which can appear after the death of the monster, since these stones are very, very valuable. Workers of lower ranks are not given the best equipment and weapons, which only serve as a means of self-defense and are not very suitable for combat. Akita Hikaru looks at his inferior weapon and Naguchi's combat pistol. The elite suits are custom-made and made from special fibers that protect against some of the damage, and their suits are sewn from the most ordinary fabric, so they can only rely on themselves in the dungeons. He has an F rank, below which there is nothing. He is the worst of the worst. 
He is even forbidden to participate in battles. For the elite he is just a porter and a servant. He's even worse than the low-ranked pawns of the elite. From the outside, the construction of the pharmaceutical company building has not changed much and now looks, as before, like an ordinary office building. But its appearance is deceptive, as there is a dungeon inside, where every wrong step can cost a life. Akita Hikaru runs to the stairs and barely catches his breath, thinking that he was finally able to get to level 10 and it was pretty hard to get here with so many things on his back. But he doesn't have time to rest, as monsters can attack at any moment. A young man with glasses looks at the tablet screen and sees a lot of red dots. He excitedly says that there is a large group of goblins ahead. More than 10 individuals have been discovered. At this time, a lot of monsters rush at their group and a black and blue window is displayed, in which it is written that this is a goblin, his class is humanoid, his character is hostile, rank F. A dark-haired man in a gray jacket orders to prepare for an attack. Destroy the front rows without using cards and look around preparing for sudden attacks so that not a single cartridge is wasted. Higuchi adjusts the scope and mutters to the goblins to come over, as he has something for them. He and the short-haired woman start shooting at the goblins, but they don't die. A woman with short hair tells Akita Hikaru that one goblin has broken back. The young man with glasses pulls out his lightsaber and prepares to repel the goblin's attack, thinking that he is already very close and even though he does not have a gun, he still needs to at least do something. Akita Hikaru tries to cope with the goblin. But nothing works out for him and he thinks that he is finished when the monster throws him back. At this time, a woman with short hair finishes off a goblin with one shot and says with contempt that this monster already has the lowest rank. But he can't cope with it, he's comfortable, because he's also paid for it. Sitting on the ground, the young man thinks that they do not have equal conditions at all. After all, he doesn't have powerful magic pistols. Unlike Nagachi, he only has this useless thing at hand, which shocks a little and is not suitable for anything else. He could have fought normally if he had a normal weapon and if the gate maps were at least a little better, they didn't give him a chance. A dark-haired man in a gray jacket says that the cleanup of this dungeon is complete and let them not forget to collect the magic stones. Two magic stones remain on the ground, and Naguchi asks if there is nothing left after them. A short-haired woman picks up the stones and says that there is nothing to be done about it, because they are only goblins of rank F. When the Awakened One defeats a monster, particles of its power in the form of magic stones may remain after it. After defeating particularly strong monsters, you can get rare stones that are used for gate maps and unlock new unique abilities. From low-rank monsters, such as goblins, you can get fragments of a magic stone. They are usually used in weapon cartridges, but they can also be useful for gate maps. The fact is that in order to activate a powerful skill, a huge amount of magic is required, so fragments of a magic stone can be useful for awakened higher ranks. A woman with short hair asks the leader to accept some of her magic stones, and he replies that he is very flattered. The magic stone is given to the awakened one who defeated the monster. In other words, those who are unable to do so will never receive magic stones. A dark-haired man in a gray jacket abruptly asks Akita where the stairs to the next level are. Akita Hikaru looks at the tablet screen and says that she is 40 meters ahead of them, but the radar has detected new movement and new monsters ahead. Three huge lions appear and a black and blue window is displayed, in which it is written that this is a werewolf lion. His class is Demonic Beast, character is Hostile, rank C. Next to him are two lion guards, their class is Demonic Beasts, character is Hostile, rank D. Nagachi pulls the trigger and says that it will be a little harder with them than with Goblin. A dark-haired man in a gray jacket orders Akita to check the data on the werewolf lion just in case. Akita Hikaru opens the information and reads that threat level C is a magical beast without special skills, but firearms do not work against it. A dark-haired man in a gray jacket says that the guardian lions will protect the werewolf, as they always act together. First, it is important to break through the defense, and only then you can defeat the werewolf lion. The task of the shield squad is to create protective barriers in order to prevent the guardian lions from attacking the rank squad. No matter what happens, they are forbidden to leave their positions. The low-ranking awakened ones fearfully agree. The woman with short hair says that today they will have to work on their protective walls. Naguchi mockingly says that he won't care if they die, but if their shields are suddenly broken, he will personally kill them. That's how they, the living wall, sacrifice themselves in order to protect the elite of rank A. This is the fate of the awakened with a low rank. Akita Hikaru asks his comrades to take care of themselves, just don't let them die. Akita Hikaru looks in horror at the monsters that are attacking at this time. A dark-haired man in a gray suit orders to prepare the cards and do not dare to retreat. 
Let the shield squad wait until the monsters come close. The low-ranked awakened ones nervously swallow and obediently wait. A dark-haired man in a gray suit orders shields to be put up. An elderly man and a young boy summon a protective barrier with gate cards. The gate card is called a protective barrier. Its rank is D. It does not have any elemental properties. It creates a magical field in front of the owner that protects against physical attacks. The guardian lions bang their heads against the shields with all their might. And the low-ranking awakened ones are thrown to the ground. They desperately shout that they won't last long and ask the elite awakened ones to attack sooner. Nagachi mockingly pulls out his card and tells the low-ranking ones not to be so afraid. Let them check out the abilities of rank A. The young man with red hair summons the Fire Warrior's gate card. The gate card is called the Fire Warrior. Its rank is A. It has the properties of the element of fire. The Fire Warrior attacks the enemy with a special sword and deals physical damage. The enemy also receives damage from fire. Nagachi shouts that he will leave nothing but coals from them and sets fire to one of the monsters. On the other flank, an elderly man is already barely holding back his protective barrier, which has been seriously damaged by the attacks of the second guardian lion and says that they need help here too. A woman with short hair says irritably that it's enough for trash ranks to whine so much. With the gate card, she summons the warrior of the winds. The gate card is called the warrior of the winds. Its rank is A. It has the properties of the element of wind. A warrior who wields the element of wind, with his sword from the streams of air, powerful attacks that easily tear the enemy apart. The woman also quickly deals with her monster and punches Nagucha's fist, smiling contentedly. Akita Hikaru screams in horror that they should not be distracted, since there is still a werewolf line. A huge monster looms over two low-ranking awakened, swinging an axe. With one blow, he breaks their defenses and causes minor damage to everyone. A very young awakened one screams in horror that with one blow he demolished all their defenses. At this time, Hikaru Akita runs forward, who demands to let him go ahead because he will distract the monster. The young man with glasses thinks that this is his chance. Now he will prove that he can also fight and pulls out his shocker baton. Nagachi kicks him in the face in a rage, while the werewolf lion behind him looks at them in amazement. The elite awakened man angrily shouts that he does not dare to ask to be allowed to go ahead. Who even gave the right to someone like him to climb ahead of them? The only task in his worthless life is to treat others. Nagachi hits Akita in the solar plexus and says that he is not even just the lowest rank of F, he is even worse. Since he is F, he is worse than garbage and it's time for him to remember already that only the highest ranks are engaged in battles. With the gate card, he summons a fire warrior and attacks the monster. A dark-haired man in a gray suit asks why the rest of the low-ranking awakened are frozen. They need more barriers. He orders Akita Hikaru to treat the wounded and hurry up, as their defenses are severely weakened. With the gate card, he invokes the elixir. The gate card is called elixir. Its rank is F. It does not have any elemental properties. It helps to restore strength, as well as heals minor wounds and helps to cope with bleeding. Akita Hikaru heals one of the low-ranking awakened ones who says that he is already fine and thanks Akita for his help, going on to put up protective barriers. The elite awakened continue to attack. The dark-haired man in the gray suit says they need more barriers. The lower ranks continue to sacrifice themselves endlessly. They can only take a blow with their gate cards, helping the elite, they can only protect, while the rest is done by the high-ranking awakened ones. Akita Hikaru heals an elderly man who mutters that he has let them all down again. His rank is so low that he is even forbidden to use a shield. How pathetic he is. I wonder how all this will end for him. Nagachi says that he is almost done and asks the boss to help them. A dark-haired man in a gray suit calls for a sea warrior with a gate card. The gate card is called the Warrior of the Sea. Its rank is A. It has the properties of the element of water. A creature dressed in misty clothes can control streams of water with his spear and plunge them into the bodies of enemies. With one blow, the warrior of the sea finishes off the werewolf lion, and a rare magic stone remains from it. As he already said, the magic stone gets the awakened one who killed this monster. They didn't even have a slim chance, the low rank guys were left with nothing again. Because of such unequal conditions, when their efforts do not pay off in any way, many awakened people quit. The world seems to be mired in inequality and injustice whether it's office life or working in dungeons. A dark-haired man in a gray suit suddenly calls out to Akita and says that he was trying to protect someone from a werewolf attack. He acted very bravely, so he gives him this card. This is a very rare rank card. He saved it for the boss of this dungeon. Is he ready to use it in the upcoming battle? Akita Hikaru says that, of course, he is ready. Nagachi is furious and asks why the boss gave away such a valuable Akita card. The leader of the dungeon cleanup team says that even knowing how strong the enemy was, Akita still rushed to help his comrades, few people could have done the same. Nagachi just winces, but doesn't say anything. 
A dark-haired man in a gray suit explains that this is an incredibly powerful card that is used to capture the strongest monsters. He should use it only on his signal. When he speaks, Akita must say the word liberation. Each awakened person can only have one gate card. Unfortunately, they can no longer use their elixir, as they will only have one attempt to deal with the dungeon boss. Let him not let them down. Akita Hikaru happily thinks, looking at the map, that he has finally been noticed and maybe he will even be able to raise his status, in no case should such a chance be missed. Nagachi looks at him with displeasure. The whole group is walking through the 10th level of the dungeon. Akita Hikaru looks at his tablet and says that, judging by the layout of the building, they are heading straight to the hall with the boss. The woman with the short haircut says that he is well versed in all sorts of drawings. The young man with glasses replies that he studied this area as a student and exclaims with excitement that the radar has detected traces of a very large monster. Apparently, this is the boss of the dungeon. A huge creature crawls out of the wall. It looks like a snake and a dinosaur. The brunette looks at him in amazement. Nagachi says it looks like this is the dungeon boss. The monster emits an intimidating roar. And a black and blue window is displayed, which says that the class of the dungeon boss is unknown, his character is hostile, his rank is also unknown. One of the low-ranking awakened ones says that he is just huge, five times bigger than a werewolf line. But they also had a hard time dealing with the werewolf. A dark-haired man in a gray suit orders them to get ready. Unless they can completely clear this dungeon if they just run away from the boss, everyone take up positions and get ready for battle. Everyone keep an eye on the monster and stay out of the range of its attacks. The leader of the dungeon cleanup team asks Akita about the monster's data. Akita Hikaru is trying to find some information, but for some reason he can't do it. He says he can't find any data, but most of all this monster looks like a basilisk. The dark-haired man in the gray suit thinks that since it is a basilisk, it means that he must use poison, and it also means that the data that he had on his hands was confirmed. He announces that this monster probably belongs to the same class as the basilisk. Rank it to prepare the gate cards, you need to check how they act on this boss. Nagachi and the woman with short hair pull out their cards. The rest of them should build protective barriers in three rows. Akita should not interfere yet, since he is their secret weapon. Akita Hikaru holds his gate map in his hands and enthusiastically thinks that he never imagined that one day the outcome of the battle would be in his hands. The leader of the dungeon cleanup team orders you to get the cards and start attacking the dungeon boss and not let them down. The monster lets out a roar and rushes forward. Low-ranking awakened ones put up a protective barrier, which the basilisk breaks with one blow of its paws with huge claws. They scream in horror that he has already destroyed all their defenses and fly away from the blow. Nagachi, a woman with short hair and a dark-haired man in a gray suit summon a fire warrior, a warrior of the winds and a warrior of the sea, attacking three of them. But the basilisk only lazily dusts himself off and looks at them with a bored look from his small red eyes, as if he expected something more. Nagachi mutters that even their combined attack couldn't do him any harm. At this time, the dungeon boss knocks down low-ranking awakened ones who barely manage to get up and knocks the cards out of their hands. Nagachi attacks the boss with a fire warrior, and Akita Hikaru, who stands next to the leader, says that the formation has been broken for a long time and everyone is fighting randomly and not according to plan, something needs to be done urgently. A dark-haired man in a gray suit orders everyone to disperse and return to the exit to which they happily agree, muttering that this is an amazing force. Hikaru Akita thinks that even elite awakened rank are completely useless against this boss. To defeat him, you need. At this time, a dark-haired man in a gray suit says that it looks like it's time to use this card, is he ready? The brunette readily nods his head. The leader of the dungeon cleanup team says that this map has a very long range and it will affect absolutely everyone except the user, in other words, he will fight the monster alone, whether he can handle it. Hikaru Akita replies that he can handle it. A dark-haired man in a gray suit says that he recommended him for a position in this company. Since people who are ready to protect their comrades at the cost of their lives are very rare and their company appreciates it very much, it seems that he was not mistaken in him when he decided to send a job invitation. He must not let them down. The brunette excitedly promises that he will not let you down in any case. A dark-haired man in a gray suit announces to everyone that Akita is now using the card on the dungeon boss and they should expect a powerful attack, as well as protect him while he gets close to the monster. Nagachi smiles and wishes him luck. Akita Hikaru happily thinks that they have finally noticed him. He must definitely justify their hopes. This is his chance to get a promotion and he will not have another one. The leader of the dungeon cleanup team commands to go on the attack and everyone rushes forward. While everyone else is distracting the basilisk, Akita Hikaru runs forward and mentally thanks everyone for their support, promising that he will not let them down. At this time, he barely manages to dodge the paw strike but continues to run on, thinking that everything is fine and he will definitely cope. The main thing is to put aside all fears and run on. A dark-haired man in a gray suit shouts that it's time to use the card. 
Akita Hikaru thinks that the outcome is about to be decided and calls for the release of the gate card. The basilisk is enveloped in a red cloud and the young man thinks that he has already coped. But at this time the ground cracks under his feet and he falls into the yawning pit. Soon Akita Hikaru falls to the ground and staggers to his feet among the ruins and next to the fallen basilisk. He looks for the rest of the members of the dungeon cleanup team and unexpectedly sees that they all remained on the platform. The young man does not understand why he alone fell into the pit, clutching his injured hand, asks the leader what just happened. The dark-haired man in the grey suit can no longer hold back his laughter and, laughing loudly, exclaims that he really fell down there. Nagachi and a woman with short hair laugh, holding their bellies and shouting that they did not expect anything else from him. Akita Hikaru looks at them blankly, and the leader of the dungeon cleanup team tells him that the card he gave him doesn't have any attacking abilities and is actually just a trap. This map destroys the entire area around it, in other words, not only the monster is trapped, but also the cardholder. The boss of this dungeon has surprisingly strong armor, and the only way to kill him is to attack right into his mouth. He had read that it opened very wide when the basilisk was preparing to devour its prey. There was no way he could find information about this monster in his tablet. Was there, he just tweaked some information there in advance so that no one would know about this weak point of the monster too early. They really needed someone like him to win this fight, but he would agree that someone needs to play the role of bait. Alkita Hikaru is shocked to recall the man's words that people who are ready to protect their comrades at the cost of their lives are very rare and their company appreciates it very much. It seems that he was not mistaken in him when he decided to send an invitation to work. He must not let them down. Naguchi mockingly shouts how stupid he is that he fell for it. At this time, the basilisk breaks out from under the rubble and emits a piercing roar. A dark-haired man in a grey suit shouts that it looks like the monster has finally noticed his treat and he hopes that Akita will seem tasty enough to him. The team leader wishes the monster a pleasant appetite. No gate card will help here. The basilisk inflicts several wounds with its teeth on Akita Hikaru, who does not understand how it happened and how they have the guts to throw people to certain death like that. A dark-haired man in a grey suit mockingly says that it seems that their bait is not too interesting to the monster. Did Akita deceive them and in fact he is tasteless? Naguchi decides to add a spark and summons a fire warrior, attacking the basilisk. Akita Hikaru asks them to stop, because if the monster doesn't kill him here, he'll just burn alive. Naguchi shouts that the heat has finally started and he hopes that Akita is not too hot there, but for sure it will taste better fried and with a crust. Suddenly, a dark-haired man in a grey suit orders him to stop pouring fire on everything here. The basilisk opens its mouth and prepares to attack and the young man with glasses covers himself with his half-burnt jacket and thinks in horror that he is going to throw out poison, just not this. Alkita Hikaru shrinks under his jacket and prepares for death, but nothing happens and he decides that the monster did not attack. Looking out from under his symbolic hiding place, the brunette realizes that it was poisonous gas and the attack went up. The elite awakened ones who remain upstairs are covered with the sleeves of their clothes. A dark-haired man in a grey suit mutters that all the poisonous fumes are flying up because of the fire and heat. A short-haired woman asks if he wants to say that the fumes are flying right into them. Akita Hikaru realizes that he is now much lower, which is why the gas does not reach him. We need to find a way to escape from here as soon as possible before it's too late. The leader of the dungeon cleanup team shouts that they will suffocate here soon and need to retreat to the exit. The young man with glasses, who hid behind a stone, thinks that everything is fine, since the monster was distracted by those who remained upstairs. And since he destroyed an entire floor with his card, he and the basilisk must have fallen to the ninth level now. This means that he can find some passage that would lead to the corridors and use them to escape from here. Akita Hikaru notices a crevice and thinks that he can try to get out through it, but he is so badly injured and everything hurts, whether he will be able to reach it at all. He has to try. With these words, he gets up and hobbles to the crevice under the deafening roar of the monster, thinking that his strength is completely running out and he needs to hurry. Exhausted from pain and wounds, Akita Hikaru somehow wanders down the corridor, not understanding why they did this and because they will do the same to other weak guys. At this time, he realizes that he has reached a dead end and decides to look for a way out further, because he still has to be here. In theory, he should have already entered one of the corridors. Please let the exit be somewhere nearby. At this time, a young man with glasses notices another crevice, from which a bright blue light can be seen. Akita Hikaru clings to her and thinks that this is the way to escape. There is definitely a light there and for sure this is some kind of room that needs to be opened somehow. But the next second, the wall next to him shatters into fragments and the basilisk's head appears from the hole. Akita Hikaru is thrown aside and he thinks that he's really going to die right here. No, he can't die like that. With the last of his strength, the young man reaches for the crevice, asking it to open. Akita Hikaru desperately tries to open the crevice, but the basilisk's new blows make him lose consciousness. 
He wakes up in a large white room with a tile floor and is surprised to think that he is still alive. Where is he? This room is so big, but where is the dungeon boss? Looking around, the young man with glasses realizes that there is no entrance. Does this mean that he still managed to escape? On the other hand, he's locked up here now. And there are the same drawings on the floor as on the gate maps. And the room itself is very strange. It feels strange, as if it is soaked in magic, just like the stones that remain after killing monsters. Suddenly, the brunette notices a bright blue glow and exclaims that it's just like that time. Thanks to him, he was able to escape from death. We need to find out where this light is coming from. Akita Hikaru approaches the crystal on the white pillar and touches it. Immediately, voices begin to be heard around him, speaking a language he does not understand and he cannot understand who is communicating with him. One of the phrases still sounds in Japanese and the young man realizes that he is being asked if he wants to get power. A white window is displayed, in which it is written that the Japanese has been recognized, who arrived here wants to receive power. Akita Hikaru asks himself if he wants to gain power and immediately remembers a scene in which a dark-haired man in a gray suit can no longer hold back his laughter and, laughing loudly, exclaims that he really fell there. Nagachi and a woman with short hair laugh, holding their bellies and shouting that they did not expect anything else from him. Akita Hikaru whispers what he wants, and very much. It doesn't matter who he is, he just needs the power to take revenge on them all. Crystal asks him if he agrees to sign the contract and asks him to confirm it. Akita Hikaru exclaims in amazement that he is being scanned now. The crystal says that the magic power has been confirmed. The one who arrived here is awakened. His probability of becoming the chosen one is 95%. The necessary settings have been made. Damage control begins. Akita Hikaru looks at his hands in amazement, from which the wounds disappear before his eyes. Vision correction begins. The eyes of the young man with glasses begin to change their color and he says that he has some strange feeling that is happening to his eyes. Replacing gate cards with high rank cards, the process has started. The brunette enthusiastically thinks that he will finally have rare and strong cards and remembers how a dark-haired man in a gray suit told him that the card he gave him actually has no attacking abilities and in fact this gate card is a trap. The awakened one can only use one gate card. Unfortunately, he can no longer use the elixir, as they will only have one attempt to deal with the boss of this dungeon. Alkita Hikaru remembers that they then swapped cards and he got a trap. And then she got lost. He is now left without any cards at all. Something starts happening in his card pouch, but he doesn't see it. The crystal begins to change its color and it glitches on the same phrase. Alkita Hikaru examines it and tries to figure out what's going on here. The crystal begins to pronounce an incomprehensible set of signs and vibrate. The young man, who has already lost his glasses, says that it seems that something did not go according to plan. The crystal vibrates more and more, and he asks him to stop, but nothing helps, and Akita Hikaru has to run away to avoid being hit by the blast wave. But even this does not help, and for a while the young man loses consciousness. When he comes to, the darkened crystal floats in the air as before, but it no longer glows. Akita Hikaru leans over him with displeasure and asks him to answer at least something, because he promised to do something with his cards. Crystal continues to be silent, but at this time the brunette realizes that something is wrong with his pocket for storing cards, and suddenly some kind of strong card appeared there. He opens his pocket and summons the gate card, which in a moment is in his raised hand. Akita Hikaru says with admiration that the map has indeed appeared. He tries to see what kind of card he got and realizes that there are several of them here. He thought that the awakened one was using only one card. Then purple cards start flying out of the young man's pocket one after another, and he shouts what's going on here and where he got so many cards from. A whole wall of cards is lined up in front of Akita Hikaru, and he thinks that how is this even possible? How can one person have such a huge deck of cards with him? He seemed to understand, because there had just been a malfunction and, probably, these cards were also broken and incorrect. The young man decides to check the card at random and grabs his head. Not understanding how it happened that all the information about this card suddenly seemed to be transferred to his head, as if all the data of all the cards were loaded into it. Soon he thinks that the download is complete and he can probably use them all. Akita Hikaru calls the dark double-headed serpent with the gate card and thinks it's so cool that he even knows all the names of the cards. At this time, a dark two-headed snake appears in front of him, which he summoned, and the brunette is shocked to think that this is a two-headed dragon, probably it is very rare and stronger even than the orang. A dark two-headed serpent spits out a jet of energy, and a powerful explosion thunders in the distance. Akita Hikaru doesn't understand where he gets such power from and starts checking the rest of the cards, assuming they can be just as strong. He uses the gate cards to summon a magical volley, a silver arrow, whirlwinds of flame, surface transformation, and all these cards turn out to be as strong as the dark two-headed serpent. Akita Hikaru laughs happily and thinks that he will see what they all have to say about it. 
Now he is not afraid of either the monster boss of the dungeon or the elite that threw him out like garbage. Akita Hikaru looks around the dilapidated room and thinks that he has tried out most of the cards, and each of them was much stronger than the cards of rank A. At this rate, there will be nothing left of the room at all, perhaps he will practice elsewhere. And yet he still did not understand what had happened to him. They were told that an awakened person is entitled to only one gate card, but he can use it as much as he wants. The gate card allows them to use amazing abilities and skills, they will receive such power that they could only dream of before. As he has already said, there is a very strict but equally unfair ranking system among the Awakened. Awakened rank A, such as Naguchi, are a kind of face of the company and they are the ones who use rare cards with strong skills. Next come the Awakened of ranks B and C. They use their gate cards to support and assist rank A. The Awakened of ranks D and E must protect their superior colleagues. But the Awakened of the lowest rank F, in fact, are expendable in battle. There are rumors that there are also Awakened S rank working somewhere, significantly surpassing even the A rank in strength, but very little is known about them. It's amazing that he can control such rare and powerful cards, because usually Awakened people of his level simply cannot cope with such power, and besides, he now has so many rare cards, and yet these cards clearly do not belong to the S rank. At least in all sorts of gossip they were described quite differently. Not only does he have a strong deck of cards now, he seems to be filled with some kind of power himself, and his eyesight has noticeably improved. It is unlikely that such changes in the body were influenced by the cards, in general, that's enough, he will think about it later. With such strength, he can easily defeat the basilisk boss of this dungeon. Akita Hikaru gathers his gate cards into his pocket in one motion and only now realizes that he does not know how to get out of here. He remembers what happened that time, it seems he asked the crevice to open. The young man orders the door to open and finds himself in the same corridor from where he got into the white room. However, the boss is no longer here. At this time, Hikaru Akita notices traces of his blood on the wall and thinks that there is no crevice here anymore, but suddenly he dreamed it all and it was just a dream. The young man calls for the gate card, and in his hands really turns out to be the card that he chose first. Akita Hikaru enthusiastically walks back down the corridor, thinking that the time has come for reckoning and now he will show this basilisk. He stops in front of the exit and presses himself against the wall when he hears the sounds of fighting. The young man looks out of the hole and sees a basilisk reclining on the ground. Elite awakened people are crowding next to him, arguing furiously about something. Low-ranking awakened people are standing in the distance and do not interfere. Akita Hikaru thinks that this is the leader and the others, so they still return to the monster, but what are they arguing about? A woman with short hair screams that she says he will be the bait. How many times has he already made mistakes with his fire warrior? Naguchi screams that she herself was only messing with her wind warrior. The woman asks the leader to make Naguchi the next bait, because they need to somehow defeat the monster. A young man with red hair screams so that she doesn't talk nonsense. You just need to throw those who don't feel sorry for the monster, for which they still need a D rank. Low-ranking awakened ones indignantly ask what kind of nonsense he is talking about and why they should sort out their problems. A dark-haired man in a gray suit menacingly orders everyone to be silent. Whether they even know how hard they are trying for them, he doesn't care who of them decides to be bait for the monster, let them think sooner. The basilisk raises its head, and Naguchi quickly grabs the blonde-haired low-ranking awakened one. Shouting at him to stop showing off, he vainly asks to let him go. Akita Hikaru, who is watching all this, thinks that they are terrible, and he wanted to rise to the rank of himself, would he really become like that himself? He clenches his fist and thinks that he is not like that and will not chase such fame. The elite believes that they have the right to muddy those who are below them. Let them now see what kind of force he will bring down on them for betrayal. It's time to start this show. Hikaru Akita summons the gate map, and the basilisk looks at him. The team leader notices that the monster is distracted from them and looks in that direction, wanting to find out what is there. He is amazed to see Akita and is surprised that he is still alive, but what is he doing there? Akita Hikaru summons the dark two-headed serpent with the gate card and orders him to kill the basilisk. A dark-haired man in a gray suit and Naguchi look at it in utter amazement. The dark two-headed serpent and the basilisk come together in a fight. The young man orders the first to burn the enemy. The fire of the snake and the poisonous gas of the basilisk collide with each other. The ground begins to crack, and the elite awakened ones fall into the pit, screaming loudly and cursing. Akita Hikaru looks at it with satisfaction. The basilisk is enveloped in a huge cloud of dust after the snake attack, and the young man nervously thinks that this attack probably at least touched the dungeon boss. He does not know how much more he will have to fight, but he will give his best. What's next? He will try to attack in the back or there will be a venomous attack again. Finally, the dust cloud dissipates, and Hikaru Akita is amazed to see that the monster has already been defeated. He exclaims that he really died from just one attack. He had a shell, it broke so easily. Turning to the dark double-headed snake, 
The young man respectfully says that he is very cool. A black and blue window is displayed, which says that the dungeon data has been updated, the dungeon boss has been defeated, and it has been confirmed. At this time, the voice of the crystal is heard, which says that the dungeon data has been updated, the dungeon boss has been defeated, confirmed. Akita Hikaru happily recognizes the voice, which continues to say that the rarity level of the dark two-headed snake has been raised and the title called Dragon Master has been obtained. A black and blue window is displayed, in which it is written that 2,000 units of experience have been obtained. The rarity level of the dark double-headed snake has been increased, 12 units of experience have been obtained, and a title called Dragon Master has been obtained. The young man thinks that he will finally be able to pump cards and strengthen them. Who would have thought that a rare strong card can also be strengthened? He looks at the black and blue window and says he still doesn't understand what these things are, he's never seen them before. Why did he suddenly see them, and so many of them, everywhere? There are really a lot of black and blue windows floating around the young man. At this time, Akita Hikaru notices a large stone, above which hangs a black and blue window, which says that this is a basilisk magic stone, its status is a treasure from a monster, its abilities are unknown, it can be picked up. The young man picks up a stone and says that the stone is actually very rare, as it is written. He looks at the treasure with admiration and says that this is the first time he has held such a valuable thing in his hands. He still can't believe that he was able to defeat a strong monster, the dungeon boss, and get a magic stone from him. Akita Hikaru strokes his dark double-headed snake and says that he couldn't have done it without him, let him rest for now. He looks to the side and assumes that his team members are there. Apparently the snake's attack was too strong and they were thrown away by the blast wave. He hopes that they really just lost consciousness. The young man runs up to them and thinks that it looks like everyone is alive. But even Ranka could not repel such an attack. A black and blue window hangs above Nagachi, in which it is written that the name of the creature is Kenji Nagachi. His rank is A. The status is unable to fight. The skills are fire warrior, loss of consciousness. A black and blue window hangs above a short-haired woman, in which it is written that the name of the creature is Ryoko Hurayama. Her rank is A. Her status is unable to fight. Her skills are warrior of the winds, loss of consciousness. A black and blue window hangs above one of the low-ranking awakened ones, in which it is written that the name of the creature is Takua Kikuchi. His rank is D. His status is unable to fight. His skills are a protective barrier, loss of consciousness. A little in the distance, Akita Hikaru sees Mr. Terra, above whom hangs a black and blue window, which says that the name of the creature is Shidru Terra. His rank is A. The status of unable to fight. The skills are warrior of the sea, loss of consciousness. Shidru Terra comes to his senses and asks Akita if the one with the dungeon and boss is injured, if he saw that dragon, and where he just came from, he urgently needs to come up with something or run. Akita Hikaru says that he destroyed the basilisk. The team leader asks again in shock, and the young man harshly asks why he deceived him by giving the wrong card and almost beating it to the monster. He remembers a scene in which the leader of the dungeon cleanup team tells him that the card he gave him doesn't have any attacking abilities and is actually just a trap. This map destroys the entire area around it. In other words, not only the monster is trapped, but also the cardholder. Shidru Terra is horrified to think that he does not understand what kind of pressure it is and how he has transformed so much. He seems to be communicating with a completely different person and nervously says that they did not deceive anyone. It seems that they just did not understand each other at that time. Because he will agree that in order to the monster has revealed all his weaknesses, some of them have to do dangerous work. And if he had told him everything right away, then everything would definitely not have gone according to plan. Yes, exactly, everything did not go according to plan. Sweat is running down his temple. But the man is still trying to justify himself, saying that he only allowed himself such rudeness because he was waiting for him to develop and raise his rank, like that. Akita Hikaru thinks that it doesn't look like they used to respect and appreciate him so much. But when they felt the power, they immediately started talking like that. The young man remembers a scene in which a dark-haired man in a gray suit can no longer hold back his laughter and, laughing loudly, exclaims that he really fell there. Nagachi and a woman with short hair laugh, holding their bellies and shouting that they did not expect anything else from him. He thinks he made Shidru Terra nervous. He looks so pathetic right now. The leader of the dungeon cleanup team is horrified to think that he is seriously in trouble and now, when they return, everyone in the company will find out what they wanted to do with Akita. It's not even just about him. Now everyone can find out about the past low-ranking awakened ones, whom they sent to their deaths in the same way. The man looks around and realizes that the others have not woken up yet. He just needs to distract Akita and quickly get rid of him. He asks him not to make such a scary face and promises that when they return from the dungeon to the company, he will tell everyone about how he coped with the dungeon boss alone. By the way, he is very interested in how he did it, because he was below even rank F. Did he really find a rare card somewhere? 
He hopes that he doesn't mind if he looks at her. Okita Hikaru hands Shaidru Tara his card, but he takes it away and throws it away, saying that it is such a pity that he is now left without a card and now let him finally die. The young man calls for the gate card, and it immediately appears in his hand. The leader of the dungeon cleanup team grabs his card in amazement and does not understand where he got another card, because he took it away. Shaidru Tara summons the sea warrior with the gate card, but Akita Hikaru quickly deals with him with a dark two-headed snake that appears. The man does not understand how he could have predicted his attack and looks in horror at the brunette who came up to him almost closely, realizing that at that time it was he who summoned that dragon. Akita Hikaru tells him not to worry. Since he is not particularly interested in him, he quits and no one will know what happened. He thanks them for everything and says goodbye. When he leaves, he thinks that he no longer wants to have anything to do with them and this power will help him reach great heights. Shaidru Tara is furious, thinking how this low-ranking boy even dared to treat him like this. He is, after all, in a rank. He needs that card. This dragon will belong to him. If he gets this card, Akita won't do anything to him anymore. The man pulls out a pistol and shoots Akita Hikaru in the back as he leaves, but the bullet hits a dark two-headed snake that appeared behind the young man, and Shaidru Tara is shocked to think that the dragon protected him, as if they knew that he would shoot. The dark-haired man shouts for Akita to stop his tricks and shoots again and again, but does not hit. The brunette thinks that he is trying in vain, because he knows all his further actions. Shaidru Tara curses and does not understand why he does not hit at all, although he aims. Akita Hikaru sees a black and blue window next to his opponent which says that the name of the creature is Shaidru Terra. Its status is stress, 25% of the strength of all skills. Skills are currently unavailable. Since there is no magic power or gate card, there are two cartridges left in the magic weapon, its next action will be continued shooting. He remembers a scene in which the leader of the dungeon cleanup team says that he is very interested in how he did it. Because he was below even rank F, did he really find a rare card somewhere? He hopes that he doesn't mind if he looks at her. A young man looks at his black and blue window which says that the name of this creature is Shaidru Terra, its status is combat readiness, it is possible to activate skills. His skills are a warrior of the sea. There are eight cartridges left in his magic weapon, his next actions will be to select the Akita gate map and attack the warrior of the sea. Akita Hikaru agrees and gives the card back. The young man tells the leader of the dungeon cleanup team not to worry, since he is not particularly interested in him, he quits. In the black and blue window of the man it is written that the name of the creature is Shaidru Terra. Its status is the effect of stress, 10% of the strength of all skills. Skills are currently unavailable. Since there is no magic power or a gate card, there are 8 cartridges left in the magic weapon. Its next action will be a sudden shot from a magic weapon. Akita Hikaru thinks that as soon as he turns his back on him, he will shoot. Abilities. Next actions. His eyes now see everything. And now it's his turn to act. Akita Hikaru orders the dark two-headed snake to attack and he knocks the gun out of Shaidru Terra's hand with a jet of fire. With the next attack he wounds the man and throws him against the wall. The leader of the dungeon cleanup team desperately asks him to stop. The brunette recalls how he himself asked them to stop, but Kenji Naguchi continued to attack with a fire warrior, and Shaidru Terra did not hinder him in any way. Akita Hikaru thinks they did it themselves. When he asked them to stop the attacks, they didn't stop, but he doesn't want to be like them, so he orders the dark two-headed snake to stop. On the black and blue window of the trembling man, it is written that the name of the creature is Shaidru Terra. His status is seriously scared, 50% of the strength of all skills. Skills are currently unavailable. Since there is no magic power or gate card, there are zero cartridges left in the magic weapon. His next action will be the inability to fight due to panic. Akita Hikaru says that maybe they did not understand each other. But now he no longer has the right to decide who can and cannot be killed. For him he is a murderer anyway. The next time he decides to kill him again, he won't miss. Shaidru Terra is horrified to think that it happened now. He has never met such a strong gate card before. The power of Akita scares him so much, as if he is not a human anymore. He will definitely kill him. A puddle spreads under the man's pants, and Akita Hikaru says with a guilty smile that he apologizes for scaring him so much. The young man throws a magic stone left over from the basilisk to Shaidru Terra and says that he can take it for himself. The team leader looks at him in amazement. And Akita Hikaru explains to him that they may need the stone to report on the successful cleaning of the dungeon. They need to leave a good impression of themselves in the company. He did a great job. And everything is just beginning for him. Well, it's time to act. The action takes place the day after the clearing of the c rank dungeon in the main office of the Clean Water Company. Two girls approach Akita Hikaru and ask him if Akita-senpai is really quitting. The young man joyfully calls out to Yuriko and Miho. 
The dark-haired girl, Yuriko Seki, says she heard that there are no problems with the cleanup yesterday. So why did he suddenly decide to leave? A girl with short blonde hair, Mio Heiskawa, exclaims that older people usually quit, let Senpai stay with them to work longer. These are his colleagues at work. Miho has been working here not so long, so she is his younger colleague, but Yuriko is the eldest. They work in the Awakened Affairs Department, deal with documentation there and help newcomers. Near the girls, black and blue windows glow, in which it is written that the name of this creature is Yuriko Seki. Her rank is C. Her status is alarmed. Her abilities are the gaze of justice. The next actions will be to dissuade Akita from being fired. The name of this creature is Miho Heiskawa. Her rank is D. Her status is confused. Her abilities are recovery gauntlets. The next actions will be to dissuade Akita from being fired. They are above him in rank, but, unlike everyone else, they somehow treat him more warmly. Iriko, Miho, you don't need to convince him. Miho Heiskawa asks what he will do after he quits. Akita Hikaru replies that he will try to do something on his own. Awaken low-ranking people who are nearby begin to discuss him, saying that is it really so hard for rank F to work here, so he decided to do something alone. They would not let him into other companies and for an interview. He would probably die himself if he had such a low rank and he suddenly lost his job. Miho Heiskawa angrily asks them to stop discussing others. Akita Hikaru tells her that everything is fine and thinks that they are not afraid to be rude only to those who are lower or seem weaker. Almost everyone in this company is like that. He is even amused by this now. Let Miho-chan stop being so angry, because their words do not hurt him in any way. Near a small group of low-ranking awakened ones. There are black-blue windows in which it is written that the name of this creature is Yuhongo, its rank is D, its status is unfriendly, its abilities are shackles, its further actions will be laughed at. The name of this creature is Chinghiragi, its rank is C, its status is unfriendly, its ability is a predatory beast, its further actions will be despised by Akita. The name of this creature is Joe Yuhara, its rank is D, its status is unfriendly, its ability is a stone barrier, its further actions will be to laugh at Akita. The name of this creature is Rin Fujiwara, its rank is D, his status is unfriendly, his ability is fiery fetters, his further actions will be laughed at along with everyone. At this time, a young man with blonde hair approaches them, who asks if Akita Senpai is really going to quit. A black and blue window is displayed next to him in which it is written that the name of this creature is Rintero Nakamura. His rank is F, his status is neutral, his ability is called Elixir, his next actions will be to support Akita. Next to him is a man with gray hair, who says that he leaves even earlier than himself. A black and blue window is displayed next to him, in which it is written that the name of this creature is Zai Teroi. Its rank is F, its status is excitement, its ability is illumination, its next actions will be to dissuade Akita from being fired. Nakamura and Mr. Terui are awakened of the lowest rank F. Mr. Terui has been working at the Clean Water Company for about 10 years, but has not received a promotion. Nakamura Rintero asks where Akita Senpai's glasses are. Mio Heiskawa exclaims that he has found something to ask and once again asks Senpai not to leave them. Zai Terui says that he is very sorry and he will miss such a good friend. Akita Hikaru thanks him for his concern and thinks that even in these pop-up signs it is perfectly clear how worried they all are about him. Of course, he doesn't want to leave them all here while he makes his own life. At this time, the young man is horrified to think why he suddenly became so anxious and, turning around, sees a large man, his boss, Sarazawa's boss. A red window is displayed next to it, which says that the name of this creature is Koji Sarazawa. Its rank is unknown, its status is unknown, its abilities are unknown, its further actions are unknown. Akita Hikaru does not understand why the window is red and the information is not displayed at all. So is their boss really one of those who surpasses even the awakened ones of rank A? Yesterday, during the clearing of the c rank dungeon, he got into an amazing room where he received incredible ability. First, he was able to control an unlimited number of gate cards in battle, although an ordinary awakened person can only use one card in battle. Crystal continues to be silent, but at this time the brunette realizes that something is wrong with his pocket for storing cards, and suddenly some kind of strong card appeared there. He opens his pocket and summons the gate card, which in a moment is in his raised hand. Akita Hikaru says with admiration that the map has indeed appeared. He tries to see what kind of card he got and realizes that there are several of them here. He thought that the awakened one was using only one card. Then purple cards start flying out of the young man's pocket one after another, and he shouts what's going on here and where he got so many cards from. A whole wall of cards is lined up in front of Akita Hikaru. And he thinks that how is this even possible? How can one person have such a huge deck of cards with him? Secondly, all these gate cards turned out to be so strong that they can destroy the dungeon boss of rank C with one attack. At this time, a dark two-headed serpent appears in front of him, which he summoned. And the brunette is shocked to think that this is a two-headed dragon. Probably it is very rare and stronger even than rank A. 
The dark two-headed serpent spits out a jet of energy, and a powerful explosion thunders in the distance. Akita Hikaru doesn't understand where he gets such power from and starts checking the rest of the cards, assuming they can be just as strong. On top of everything else, his eyesight has also changed. Now he can read his opponent, his strength, abilities and even further actions. A dark-haired man pulls out a pistol and shoots Akita Hikaru in the back, screaming for him to die. But the bullet hits a dark two-headed snake that appeared behind the young man. And Shai Drutera is shocked to think that the dragon protected him, as if they knew that he would shoot. The dark-haired man shouts for Akita to stop his tricks and shoots again and again, but does not hit. The brunette thinks that he is trying in vain, because he knows all his further actions. The young man tells the leader of the dungeon cleanup team not to worry, since he is not particularly interested in him, he quits. In the black and blue window of the man it is written that the name of the creature is Shydru Terra. Its status is the effect of stress, 10% of the strength of all skills. Skills are currently unavailable. Since there is no magic power or a gate card, there are 8 cartridges left in the magic weapon, its next action will be a sudden shot from a magic weapon. Akita Hikaru thinks that as soon as he turns his back on him, he will shoot. Abilities. Next actions, his eyes now see everything. Now he is many times superior in strength and skills to the awakened rank A. And yet no changes have occurred. The window is still red and it still says that the name of this creature is Koji Sarazawa. His rank is unknown, his status is unknown, his abilities are unknown, his further actions are unknown. Did Chief Sarazawa have even more power than he did? Koji Sarazawa asks if Seki-san would mind if he interrupted their conversation. Seki Yuriko replies that of course not. Koji Sarazawa smiles broadly and asks if he is the same Akita. They never got to meet, although he led the dungeon cleanup team that he was a member of. Akita Hikaru thinks that Sarazawa is one of the bosses of the Clean Water Company and quite an influential person. The awakened teams that are under his leadership always achieve very great heights. He has his own rank awakened squad, which includes Shaijiru Terra, Ryoko Harayama, Kenji Naguchi and the rest, but the chief himself is almost impossible to meet on missions. In general, he has taken a fairly high position and even has strong ties with the Prime Minister of Japan. It is said that it was thanks to his excellent ability to build connections that Sarazawa Koji achieved such amazing heights, but still he should not blindly believe everything that is said. They also say that he has 20 mistresses, but, apparently, the boss's magical abilities are at a great height. Sarazawa Koji says that he would not like to distract Akita, but he is very interested to know why he suddenly decided to quit the best company in his industry. Akita Hikaru asks what Mr. Sarazawa would do if he reported that he had a complaint about the way the clean water company treats its lower-ranking employees. Yuriko Seki and Mio Heizukawa look at their former colleague in heart, and Sarazawa Koji grins and says that he did not know that among his employees there are those who are ready to openly express their dissatisfaction and he is very sorry that they met so late. He wishes him good luck in his new job and demands not to take away all their clients from them. Akita Hikaru clenches his fists and thinks that threats have already been used and he still made him a little mad. He needs to try hard and improve his abilities. In no case should he be inferior to Sarazawa in strength. Naguchi Kenji informs Mr. Terra that the guy, Akita, has decided to quit. Ryoko Harayama says that he seems to be quite weak to have lasted so little time. He decided to leave, but he didn't tell them anything at all, how arrogant he was. Terra Shaidru asks them to stop. If he wants to leave, then let him leave and thinks it's good that Akita is quitting. He doesn't want to see him anymore after what happened in the dungeon. The team leader walks down the corridor. Hunched over, Naguchi Kenji and Harayama Ryoko run after him and ask the boss to wait. Because he never told them how he was able to cope with that monster in the dungeon, did he pull off some kind of cunning move while they were unconscious? Tara Shaidru, in a rage, shouts at them to shut up and not bring up this topic anymore. Akita Hikaru leaves the building of the main office of the Clean Water Company and happily thinks that he has finally quit and now all that remains is to find a dungeon to clean up. At this time, he hears the desperate screams of an elderly man in a brown cap, who accosts clean water workers and asks them to listen to him, but everyone tells him that they are very busy right now. A man in a brown cap notices Akita and runs to him as fast as he can, asking him to wait and calling him son. When he reaches the young man, he asks if he is awake and if he is working here. Akita Hikaru replies that he was working here a couple of minutes ago. A man in a brown cap grabs his hand and asks him to save him, as there is work in the dungeon. The action takes place in a cafe. The young man in a black suit and a man in a brown cap are sitting at a table and drinking a cocktail. Above the latter there is a black and blue window in which it is written that the name of this creature is Jube Matsuda. He has no rank, no abilities. The next action will be to complain about the current situation. The man says his name is Jube Matsuda. Akita Hikaru says that the building that Mr. Matsuda owned has turned into a dungeon and he wants Akita, as an awakened one, to help him clean up this dungeon. 
whether he understood everything correctly. Matsuda Jube says that's right, but small and medium-sized enterprises have serious problems. In general, they simply do not have such a large amount to pay for cleaning services offered by large companies, like the same clean water. So in small buildings that have become dungeons, the government usually sends awakened people who are not members of any of the organizations. But such guys are usually completely inexperienced or simply beg for a lot of money, but they never finish the job. He has already applied to large companies four times, but they are already demanding millions from him as an advance payment. Akita Hikaru thinks that even in a small dungeon it can be very dangerous. So often the reward for clearing turns out to be too small compared to the effort expended. He had heard of such awakened ones who, in such cases, simply demanded an advance payment, and then disappeared without a trace, never having completed their work. Not only some large and tall building can become a dungeon. Of course, large cleaning companies mostly take up work in some skyscrapers or buildings with power plants, because their owners are willing to pay large sums for cleaning their property. They are much less interested in cleaning the buildings of small firms or simple five-story buildings, because they will not pay a lot of money for such work. Companies do not send their awakened ones to such places, and therefore not too rich people like Mr. Matsuda have to rely on less professional and successful self-employed awakened ones. This means that he cannot afford to hire a team at all, and the self-employed either will not agree, or they will simply take the money and run away. A black and blue window hangs above a drooping man in a brown cap in which it is written that the name of this creature is Matsuda Ju. He has no rank. His status is suppressed. He has no abilities. The next action will be to continue to convince Akita. Akita Hikaru bites his lips and wonders why no one wants to help him, because he has no options left. And yet, injustice reigns everywhere, even outside the office. Matsuda Ju lowers his head and says that he understands that he cannot agree to this request without notifying his boss. But he simply does not know what to do except to contact the Awakened from the companies directly and not through his superiors. Akita Hikaru smiles and says that he has just quit the clean water company and was looking for a dungeon where he could test his skills. He will not require prepayment. If he does not mind, he will help him with clearing the dungeon. Matsuda Jube jumps up in shock. A young man in a black suit stretches out his hand and introduces himself, and then offers to agree that he will receive his payment only if he cleans the dungeon. Whether the price of 100,000 will suit Mr. Matsuda, the man happily calls his last name and Okita Hikaru asks to accompany him to that dungeon. The action takes place near Mr. Matsuda's building. Matsuda Jube points with his finger and says that it is here, around the corner. Akita Hikaru runs up to it and says it's impressive. The man in the brown cap proudly says that he has put a lot of effort into it and it is already like his own. At this time, a loud scream is heard from a girl who demands to leave her alone. A girl with long blonde hair furiously asks how many more times she needs to repeat that they no longer need their services. Two guys ask why they are so angry, because they came to talk to her grandfather. The girl raises her hand with the phone in a pink case and says that they will demand money for their services again later and everything has already been recorded. The guys cover their faces in horror and demand to remove the camera. The girl says that either they leave immediately and do not return, or she sends all the videos to the right place and informs them that they violate all laws about the activities and work of the awakened. The guys quickly run away, shouting that the girl has found out everything and needs to leave. Matsuda Jube runs to her and asks if she's okay, calling Saki what's going on here anyway. Saki replies that these people have come again, so she decided to scare them. At this time, she notices Akita Hikaru and asks her grandfather who is with him. Matsuda Jube happily says that this young man is an awakened one and he is from pure water. Can she imagine that he agreed to help them with clearing the dungeon? And he also said that he would not take an advance payment. The young man in the black suit says that he has already quit. Saki comes up close to Akita Hikaru and says that all awakened ones have a certificate and she wants to look at it. The brunette hands her an ID card and the girl looks at his F rank in shock, asking if grandfather is aware that he has the lowest rank among the awakened, if he wants her to drive him away. Matsuda Jube says he's so small. There is a black and blue window above Saki, which says that the name of this creature is Saki Matsuda. She has no rank. Her abilities are missing. Her status is strong distrust. The next action will be to beware of Akita. Akita Hikaru asks Matsuda Saki not to worry, because he will not cause any problems for her or Mr. Matsuda. The girl with blonde hair says that since Grandpa believed in him, she will have to do it too. Akita Hikaru asks Matsuda Jube to sign the permission for him to enter the dungeon and hands him a piece of paper. The man in the brown cap asks again if he really doesn't need to make an advance payment. A young man in a black suit heads to the entrance of the dungeon and says that they do not need to worry, as he will try to deal with everything as quickly as possible. 
He stops in front of the entrance, which is covered with yellow warning tapes and thinks that, unfortunately, among those awakened who prefer to work independently, it is very common to meet scammers like those too. Such people do not just tarnish the reputation of the awakened, because of them, the owners of buildings themselves suffer in the first place. All these thoughts are just haunting him, for the sake of Mr. Matsuda and his family. He will definitely defeat the boss of this dungeon. A black and blue window is displayed, which says that the information about the dungeon has been updated and the current location is the entrance to the dungeon on the first floor. Akita Hikaru walks through the dungeon and thinks that it is much more spacious than he thought. The corridors of the room look so strange. Probably there used to be some kind of service center in the building with separate offices for each company. A notification appears that the data has been updated, activity has been noticed and there are monsters nearby. The young man is surprised that he now knows information about monsters, what kind of power he has, it's so great, now he knows everything about the monsters on the first floor. A black and blue window is displayed, which says that 20 goblin monsters have been detected, two guardian goblins have been detected, one senior goblin has been detected, 23 creatures in total, zero have been killed, the threat level is F rank. The goblins begin to attack, Akita Hikaru apologizes to them and decides that he will try out new cards on them. With the gate card, he summons the one enveloped in hellfire and orders the goblins to be burned. A notification pops up saying that the goblin has been killed, 3060 experience points have been obtained, and 850 skill points have been obtained. The data has been updated, and the rarity of the map called hellfire has been increased. The data has been updated, and a new title has been received called the Lord of Fire. Akita Hikaru thinks that this card is also very strong. He again destroyed all the enemies with one attack. Then the fire seemed to pass through the entire dungeon. Immediately, he realizes that it has become difficult for him to breathe. A black and red window is displayed, which says that there is a sharp decrease in oxygen levels, a great threat to life. Akita Hikaru remembers that it is not worth burning fires in enclosed spaces, but did he really walk through the entire dungeon and use all the oxygen, enveloped in hellfire with his fiery hurricane? It's bad. The brunette thinks that these are such cards, enveloped in the flames of hell, he left him completely without air. A red notification window pops up, which says that there is a sharp decrease in oxygen levels and a high probability of death. Akita Hikaru thinks that things are bad and something needs to be done urgently. He chooses one of the cards and uses it to summon the Great Lady of the Winds, who begins to blow out a stream of air. The almost suffocated young man in a black suit mutters that the body does not obey at all and let her hurry. A black and blue window pops up which says that the data has been updated and the oxygen level on the floor has been normalized. Alkita Hikaru falls to the ground and exhales joyfully, saying that he is alive and it seems that he did not make a mistake in choosing the card, she really returned oxygen to the floor. He would definitely have died if he had chosen another card. At first, he almost killed himself with a card, and then he was able to survive with the help of his own cards. In general, all his cards are too strong for monsters in the dungeons. It's like he doesn't brush off midges with his hand, but immediately drops bombs on them, only that's what the point is. In that strange room, he could safely use the full power of the cards without fear of consequences. There he simply destroyed everything around, and he remained unharmed, as if he were in armor. He fears that things are very different in ordinary dungeons and he needs to control the power of his gate cards. And you will need to study the full power of your cards properly. A young man in a black suit looks at the goblins he killed and thinks that fragments of stones fell from them. They restore magic, although there are few of them, but in the future he may need these fragments, he will take them with him. A black and blue window pops up, which says that the data has been updated, an item called a fragment of a magic stone has been received, restores 1% of magical power. Akita Hikaru picks them up and thanks the goblins for the pebbles. Matsuda Jube is sitting on a bench outside the building, with Matsuda Saki standing next to him, who impatiently asks Grandpa to go home. Dungeons are usually clean for a very long time. And this guy is also a beginner, he will probably work there for several days. He'll catch a cold if he stays here too long. Matsuda Jube says that he will be fine, Mr. Akita is risking his life for them now, since he can't do anything. He wants to at least wait and meet him. Matsuda Saki mutters that he doesn't want to listen to her again. Okay, let him sit, but when it gets dark, they will definitely go home. She's going to go to the store to see if Grandpa needs to buy something. Matsuda Jube thanks Saki. At this time, Akita Hikaru goes up to the second level of the dungeon and sees a black and blue window, which says that 18 goblins, 6 goblin guards, 5 senior goblins were found on the second floor. There were 29 creatures on the floor, 23 were killed, the threat level of rank F. The young man in the black suit thinks that it looks like there are more goblins here than on the last floor. It would be nice to destroy all the goblins at once from a great distance. But he does not want that situation with Hellfire to happen again. 
He decides to try to attack them from afar and one at a time. Although it will take longer, but it is much safer. Suddenly, goblins rush at him. And Akita Hikaru calls the black magic teacher with a gate card, ordering him to open fire. The goblins fall one by one. But at this time a red notification window pops up, which says that the consumption of magic has been increased to 10% magic units per second. A young man in a black suit tries to stop the teacher of black magic, but nothing works. A red notification window pops up, which says that magic consumption has been increased to 50% magic units per second. In desperation, Akita Hikaru asks the black magic teacher to return to the place, and he hides in the gate map. A black and blue window pops up, which says that all the monsters have been destroyed and the floor has been cleared. The brunette thinks it's great, of course, that he managed to defeat them all before the magic was completely over, but he probably doesn't have enough experience at all to manage gate cards with such powerful characteristics. A red notification window pops up, which says that less than 10% of the magic power is left. He had only used the gate cards three times, and there was almost no magic left. Alkita Hikaru looks at the black magic teacher's card and thinks that the last card does not save magic at all, although, of course, aimed fire at enemies is a good thing. A young man in a black suit decides to use magic stones, thinking that even though they will restore a little magic, it's better than nothing. It seems that the stones have started to work, but it's better for the next floors to take someone who doesn't spend so much magic because it should be saved for the battle with the dungeon boss. So he needs some kind of melee card right now, like a warrior type card like Tyra Shidru and the others. At least his former management helped him somehow. Akita Hikaru summons the Azure Samurai's gate card and tests his ability. Satisfied, he thinks that the Azure Samurai fights and attacks exactly the way he needs. He is sure that this card will not let him down. A notification pops up that monsters have been spotted nearby, and a young man in a black suit orders an Azure Samurai to prepare for an attack. In one attack, the warrior destroys all the goblins, and Akita Hikaru sighs, thinking that this one also destroyed them all with one swipe. A black and blue window pops up, which says that the data has been updated, all monsters have been destroyed and the floor has been completely cleared. In the next black and blue window, it says that 3360 experience units have been received and the rarity of swordsman type cards has been increased. 980 units of skill have been obtained and a new title called the Master of the Sword has been opened. Akita Hikaru quite says that the cards are improving. As he thought, such cards like swordsmen spend much less magic. If things go on like this, he will be able to restore enough magical powers only with fragments from goblins. If he continues to explore and reveal the abilities of the map, he will be able to clear all the remaining floors of the dungeon using only one of them. On the fourth floor of the dungeon, a young man in a black suit orders an Azure Samurai to dissect all goblins. A black and blue notification window pops up, which says that 3,680 units of experience have been received. The rarity and speed of swordsman type cards have been increased. 970 units of skill have been obtained and basic information from the section called fencing has been opened. On the fifth floor of the dungeon, the Azure Samurai unleashes a barrage of blows on the goblins. A black and blue notification window pops up, which says that 3,950 units of experience have been received. The rarity and strength of the card called Azure Samurai have been increased. 1,130 units of skill have been obtained. More complex information from the section called Fencing has been opened. The gate map has been updated. New skills have been acquired under the names Ido and Tsuki. Ido is the art of sudden attack or counterattack with a blade initially sheath. Tsuki is a Japanese martial arts term that denotes a stabbing blow with a katana. The young man enthusiastically rushes to try out new skills. On the sixth floor of the dungeon, after clearing it, a black and blue notification window pops up, which says that 3,950 units of experience have been received. The rarity, speed and strength of the card called Azure Samurai have been increased. The data has been updated. An item called a fragment of a magic stone has been received, restores 1% of magic power. On the seventh floor of the dungeon, after clearing it, a black and blue notification window pops up which says that 1130 units of skill have been received. Expert information from the section called fencing has been opened. 1130 units of skill have been received. Expert information from the section called fencing has been opened. 1130 units of skill have been received. Expert information from the section called fencing has been opened. The data has been updated. An item called a fragment of a magic stone has been received, restores 1% of magic power. On the 8th floor, two goblin warriors of the humanoid class, hostile character and rank D appear for the first time. The Azure Samurai defeats them again with one blow, and Akita Hikaru is amazed that even the armor does not bother him. On the ninth floor, the young man meets the dungeon boss and thinks that this is the floor with the dungeon boss. He cannot believe that he reached him so quickly, although it usually takes a day or even two to clean up. 
Above the huge green monster hangs a black and blue window, which says that this is the boss of a dungeon called the Royal Goblin. He belongs to a humanoid class, his character is hostile, his rank is C. Immediately, a special window pops up, which only Akita can see, in which it is written that the name of this creature is Goblin Royal. Its status is embittered. Its ability is a terrifying menacing roar. Its next action will be to use its ability called a terrifying menacing roar. The Royal Goblin opens its mouth in order to use the ability, but at this time the Azure Samurai blows off its head. Akita Hikaru mockingly says that he was really going to do something, but he didn't wait and hit ahead of time. Well, how so? A black and blue window pops up, which says that the dungeon data has been updated, the dungeon boss has been defeated, and it has been confirmed. A lot of black and blue windows pop up, in which it is written that the name of this creature is Goblin Royal, its status is unable to fight, beheaded, no abilities, is dead. The name of this item is the Magic Stone of the Royal Goblin. The status is a treasure from a monster, the abilities are unknown, you can pick up. 8830 units of experience have been obtained. The rarity of the card called Azure Samurai has been increased. 830 skill units were obtained and a title called a Born Swordsman was obtained. Akita Hikaru picks up the magic stone of the Royal Goblin and says that, therefore, he has already cleared the entire dungeon, he cleared the dungeon alone without any problems, although he almost killed himself at the very beginning. The more often you use the card, the easier it is to manage it later, and it seemed to clear up in your head, it became easier to think, I wonder how strong this card will become in the future. Akita Hikaru comes out of the company building and greets Mr. Matsuda and Saki. The man in the brown cap asks Mr. Akita if he is too fast. Matsuda Saki mutters that it hasn't even been an hour. He just recently started cleaning up. What's up? Matsuda Ju bitterly says that it seems Akita couldn't handle it and decided to give up. Matsuda Saki tries to comfort him, telling him not to get too upset because he only has the F rank so he couldn't do anything. The man in the brown cap sadly says that it's okay because Akita listened to his story and tried to help him somehow. He really is grateful to him for this, but it seems that this building is doomed and he needs to look for a new job. Akita Hikaru scratches his head and says that he, like, cleared the dungeon. Natsuda Saki shouts that he wants her to believe that he has dealt with everything in just one hour. He is the same as all the past awakened ones. He also decided to deceive his grandfather. Natsuda Jube enters the building of the company and says in amazement that the dungeon is no more. A girl with blonde hair whispers that this can't be happening. The two of them shout that Akita is very cool and saved them. How did he do it? He even defeated the main monster alone. Was he really all alone and was able to clear the entire dungeon so quickly? Akita Hikaru says with embarrassment that he was probably just lucky and got a good gate map and thinks that he is really sorry. But he will never tell them the whole truth anyway. A young man in a black suit turns to Matsuda Saki and says that he is glad that he was able to help them. He will not rush them with payment, they will send him money when they can, he thinks it's time to say goodbye. Matsuda Jube asks to wait and asks if Mr. Akita would like to work in the dungeons more, as there are several more dungeons that need to be cleared. Akita Hikaru says he seems to have completely cleared out Mr. Matsuda's building. The man in the brown cap says that he has several more buildings facing the dungeons and shows the direction of the next dungeon. Matsuda Saki exclaims that Grandpa is too suddenly climbing to Mr. Akita with new tasks, because they didn't even thank him properly. Turning to the awakened one, thanks him and asks for forgiveness for the fact that her grandfather sometimes gets carried away. Akita Hikaru smiles and says that she does not need to apologize for this, because he, as an awakened one, is only glad to get a new job. He just needs magic stones from the dungeons, so they helped him a lot. Matsuda Jube happily says that he is now taking Mr. Akita to the next dungeon. The young man in the black suit thinks that he did not imagine that he would go to the next dungeon so quickly. This is such a great success, there he will be able to test the strength of his other cards. Akita Hikaru enthusiastically says that he is ready to go, but at this time his stomach is rumbling loudly from hunger. Matsuda Saki asks if he has been hungry while working, and the awakened one has no choice but to agree. Then the girl with blonde hair abruptly grabs the amazed young man by the hand and drags him along, shouting that then she invites him to visit and will feed him heartily. The action takes place in the home of the Matsuda family. Matsuda Saki serves food to the men sitting at the table and asks Akita Hikaru if everything is okay and let him say right away if he doesn't like something. The awakened one says that everything is fine. Matsuda Jube suggests that he celebrate the successful cleaning of the dungeon properly. And the young man in a black suit agrees, thinking what's the matter, after cleaning the dungeon, Mr. Matsuda invited him to his house for dinner as a sign of gratitude. And his granddaughter Saki cooked a lot of delicious food, but it seems to him that she is very worried about something. Akita Hikaru says that all the food turned out very tasty. And Matsuda Saki, embarrassed, thanks for the compliment. The awakened one apologizes for the personal question and asks if Saki's parents are coming to dinner. 
Matsuda Jube droops and replies that his son and his wife work abroad. But now they can't return in any way, because the airport in Tokyo has turned into a dungeon, so Saki now lives with him. The blonde-haired girl looks sadly at her plate. The airport in Tokyo was the door to Japan for many countries, both in terms of tourism and in terms of exports and imports, and, of course, for all these areas. The transformation of Tokyo Airport into a dungeon was a serious blow. Because of this, many people from abroad cannot get to Japan and are increasingly demanding that the government clean up this dungeon. Matsuda Jube continues to talk about how he has been living all alone for a long time, and Saki is now helping him in many ways. Matsuda Saki asks Mr. Akita if his relatives are alright. Akita Hikaru replies that he has a mother and a sister, although they have not seen each other for a very long time. Matsuda Jube suggests that Mr. Akita spend the night with them today. What do he and Saki think about this? Maybe they can listen to how he managed to clean up the whole dungeon today, because she's interested in finding out too. The girl with blonde hair says that Mr. Akita must be very embarrassed to talk about this. In the end, he refused to stay the night with Mr. Matsuda and left them very late in the evening. Akita Hikaru walks through Tokyo at night and thinks that Mr. Matsuda and Saki are quite close. He is very pleased to once again understand that with his work he helps such simple families. He remembers the happy faces of the Matsuda family and immediately before his eyes there are memories of how happy his mother and sister were when he got his job. The awakened one takes out his phone and dials his mother's number and tells her that he quit today and everything is fine with him. He decided to work alone for now. Let her not worry, he will still try for them. The action takes place near Mr. Matsuda's third building early the next morning. Akita Hikaru approaches Matsuda Jube and is surprised to see Saki next to him. He asks her why she is not at school, because today is a school day. Matsuda Saki stammers that she will go there later. Yesterday he said that he now lives all alone. She wishes him good luck in the dungeon. The girl hands him the bag and runs away very quickly. The awakened one tries in vain to stop her, and then looks at the bag and realizes that he has been handed a bento. Matsuda Jube says he kept wondering what she was doing so early in the morning, so she was cooking him bento. Akita Hikaru thinks that he is not sure that he will find time in the dungeon to eat this bento. The man in the brown cap says that he hopes that everything will work out for him today, and the young man in the black suit asks to rely on him. Matsuda Jube takes the bag from him and says that he can give him the bento later if he is uncomfortable with it, and the awakened one thanks him for this. The action takes place on the first floor of the dungeon. A black and blue window pops up, which says that the dungeon data has been updated, activity has been noticed and monsters are nearby. There are 14 goblins found on the first floor of the dungeon, 2 goblin guards, 16 creatures on the floor, 0 killed, threat level of rank F. Akita Hikaru thinks that it seems that in this dungeon he will be able to meet only goblins of rank F. Inside, this dungeon looks exactly the same as the one he cleared a day ago. So far, no one has managed to discover the principle of turning an ordinary building into a dungeon. Previously, Governments have attempted to calculate the algorithm for the emergence of dungeons, but none of their projects have been successful. They only know that the size of the dungeon directly depends on the size of the building. The larger and higher the building, the more extensive the dungeon will be. Accordingly, the larger the dungeon itself, the more dangerous and stronger the monsters inside it will be. A young man in a black suit thinks that the size of this building is exactly the same as the one that was yesterday, which means that the dungeon boss may look like a royal goblin. He apologizes to Mr. Matsuda, since this building is not at all suitable for checking his other gate maps here. Well, he will have to act again according to the plan he tested yesterday. Akita Hikaru calls for the Azure Samurai gate card and says that all the goblins just scattered to different places and they are definitely not going to attack altogether. You need to figure out a way to quickly destroy them all. At this time, new data about the gate map called Azure Samurai appears in his brain. And the awakened one squeezes his head with his hands, thinking that he was thinking for a second and new data about the map has already appeared before his eyes. He decides to strike with a crescent-shaped blade and orders the use of a skill called the Moonlight Ring. The Azure Samurai cuts through all the goblins on the first floor in the blink of an eye and a black and blue window is displayed, which says that the data has been updated. The monsters have been destroyed and the floor has been cleared. The data has been updated. 2440 units of experience have been obtained. The skill level has been increased. Akita Hikaru thinks that the Azure Samurai cut through everything around him so quickly and destroyed even those goblins who were hiding. How many more similar skills he has to learn? He decides to move on. The action takes place on the second floor of the dungeon. A blue-white window is displayed, in which it says that the data has been updated. An item called a fragment of a magic stone has been received, which restores 1% of magical power. The data has been updated. All monsters have been destroyed and the floor has been cleared. The data has been updated. 2,460 units of experience have been obtained, and the skill level has been increased. 
The action takes place on the third floor of the dungeon. A blue-white window is displayed, in which it says that the data has been updated. An item called a fragment of a magic stone has been received, which restores 1% of magical power. The data has been updated, and a new skill called counterattack has been obtained. The action takes place on the fourth floor of the dungeon. A blue-white window is displayed, in which it says that the data has been updated. An item called a fragment of a magic stone has been received, which restores 1% of magical power. A blue-white window is displayed, in which it says that the data has been updated. An item called a fragment of a magic stone has been received, which restores 1% of magical power. The action takes place on the fifth floor of the dungeon. A blue-white window is displayed, which says that the data has been updated. All monsters have been destroyed and the floor has been cleared. The action takes place on the sixth floor of the dungeon. Here the Awakened One meets goblins with spears. A black and blue window is displayed near them, in which it is written that this is a spear goblin. He belongs to the class of humanoids. His character is hostile, the rank of E. One of them throws a spear at a young man in a black suit and he is surprised to think that these monsters have already learned how to throw spears, but fortunately he has a new skill for such a case. He summons the Azure Samurai's gate card and applies a new skill called Rain, which crushes the stone, ordering the destruction of all their weapons. A black and blue window pops up, which says that the data has been updated, a successful counterattack has been carried out, the data has been updated, 2530 units of experience have been obtained and a new title called Unsurpassed Swordsman has been obtained. A gate map has been updated and new skills have been acquired called a series of strikes. The Spearman Goblins, who have lost their weapons, try to escape in a panic, but Okita Hikaru orders the Azure Samurai to use a triple blow. With a powerful attack, he kills all the Goblin Spearmen and even leaves a deep mark in the floor. A black and blue window pops up, which says that the data has been updated, all monsters have been destroyed and the floor has been cleared. The Awakened One looks at the remaining destruction and says that he used a very strong skill again, so much so that he left a mark in the floor again. A black and blue window pops up which says that the data has been updated. 3,800 units of experience have been obtained. Attacks have been improved, which consist of three strikes. 180 units of skill have been obtained. A title called Master of Secret Techniques has been obtained. Akita Hikaru looks at his gate card and says that he can finally raise her rank. How strong will she become after that? With the help of magic, which can only be used by the Awakened, they can activate the gate cards, so they summon the creatures that are sealed in them to their world. The gate map shows not only the creature that it can summon, but also its type and component skills. In addition, gate cards can also be hostile to each other if they are too close to each other, so one awakened person cannot use two gate cards at once, and each of them has only one. Therefore, in battle, you will not see a special variety of characters and abilities in any particular awakened one. That is why the awakened ones work in teams so that they can help each other with their cards and abilities. For a monster with the power of fire, the gate card of the same element will act with little damage, but if you change the attacker to an awakened one with the gate card of the element of water, the damage will be much greater. However, for some reason, the rule with warring gate cards does not apply to his huge deck of cards at all. In addition, his gate cards are constantly improving after each battle and more and more skills are opening up to him. He has never seen gate cards do this before. Thanks to all these features of his deck of cards, he can clear an entire floor with one blow. Once he learns how to use the rest of the cards correctly, he will be able to clear dungeons in a few minutes. But what if a dungeon appears so strong that it will be difficult to clear it even with its gate cards? The action takes place on the seventh floor of the dungeon. There is a big monster on the rise, and Akita Hikaru, who is getting close to him, hiding behind rocks, thinks that he has already reached the dungeon boss. He is so sorry, because he thought that he could test some more abilities of his gate cards. The goblin opens its mouth in a roar, and a black and blue window is displayed, in which it is written that this is the boss of a dungeon called the Royal Goblin. Owns a spear, he belongs to the humanoid class, his character is hostile, his rank is C+. The Awakened One thinks that the boss in this dungeon is exactly the same as last time. So if the buildings are about the same in size or appearance, then the dungeons inside will not differ too much from each other. The royal goblin begins to swing his spear and Akita Hikaru thinks that the spear is much longer than the sword and it will be very difficult to get close to him. Now he cannot reach it. He hopes that he will have skills that work at long distances. There should still be skills left that he hadn't had time to test. The brunette summons the Azure Samurai's gate card and uses a skill called Lightning Attacks. The samurai rushes forward and kills the dungeon boss again with one blow. Akita Hikaru is amazed to think that even from a long distance he defeated him with just one blow. It looks like he also destroyed a couple of walls into the bargain. The young man looks fondly at the Azure Samurai and says that this card has amazing skills. A black and blue window pops up, 
which says that the dungeon data has been updated, the dungeon boss has been defeated, confirmed. The magic stone of the royal goblin has been obtained. Its ability is to restore 3% of magic power. The awakened one carefully picks up the purple magic stone and says that the boss was, of course, very light. But he still managed to get hold of very valuable things, such as this stone, for example. Also, the gate map has improved again, it's just incredible. A black and blue window pops up, which says that the dungeon data has been updated. The dungeon has been cleared of monsters in 300 seconds. Well, it's time to get back to Mr. Matsuda. Matsuda Jube is sitting on a bench near the building, who, seeing Akita Hikaru's shadow, turns around abruptly and asks in amazement if he has finished everything again. The awakened one smiles and shows him the magic stone of the royal goblin, to which Matsuda Jube jumps up from his seat and runs to the side, telling Akita to follow him. He barely manages to catch up with him, asking him to wait and at least give him a taste of the bento that Saki made for him, introducing her. The royal goblin begins to swing his spear and Akita Hikaru thinks that the spear is much longer than the sword and it will be very difficult to get close to him. Now he cannot reach it. He hopes that he will have skills that work at long distances. There should still be skills left that he hadn't had time to test. The brunette summons the Azure Samurai's gate card and uses a skill called Lightning Attacks. The samurai rushes forward and kills the dungeon boss again with one blow. Akita Hikaru is amazed to think that even from a long distance he defeated him with just one blow. It looks like he also destroyed a couple of walls into the bargain. The young man looks fondly at the Azure Samurai and says that this card has amazing skills. The action takes place in the next dungeon. Akita Hikaru uses a skill called Blade Dance and cleans the entire floor again with one blow. A black and blue window pops up, which says that the dungeon data has been updated. All monsters have been destroyed and the floor has been completely cleared. Then he spent three more days cleaning out buildings from the complex that belonged to Mr. Matsuda Jube. He defeated bosses, cleared dungeons, and gained new skills for his gate map. Akita Hikaru asks in amazement, Is it really true that all their eight buildings have become dungeons? Matsuda Saki replies that her grandfather is not particularly lucky. And after the cleanup, Mr. Matsuda and Saki always invited him to their house and treated him. He still can't believe that his life has changed so dramatically, and not so long ago he was a pathetic expendable at the clean water company. He will try his best. Next to the huge goblin, a black and blue window is displayed, in which it is written that this is the boss of a dungeon called the Royal Goblin with a mutation. He belongs to the humanoid class, his character is hostile, his rank is C++. Akita Hikaru summons the Azure Samurai's gate card and applies a skill called Swift Triple Strike which defeats the dungeon boss in an instant. The awakened one thinks that he has cleared all the dungeons. A black and blue window pops up, which says that the dungeon data has been updated. The dungeon has been cleared of monsters in 300 seconds. The action takes place on the street near the buildings. Matsuda Jube happily thanks Akita Hikaru, because now the buildings will finally be able to start working again, shops will open, and all this is thanks to Akita. He saved not only himself, but also many other workers. The young man in the black suit confusedly says that this is his job, because he is an awakened one. Matsuda Jube offers him to stay with them for a while as a sign of gratitude, and Saki will certainly be glad of this. Akita Hikaru thanks him for the invitation and says that after their meeting, he was once again convinced that their world was mired in inequality and injustice. He believes that his duty as an awakened one is to go to the next dungeon and start helping ordinary people like Mr. Matsuda himself. The old man says that he will not detain him and wishes Akita good luck. Akita Hikaru wishes Mr. Matsuda good luck and asks them to call him if they need help. Matsuda Jube looks after the departing awakened one. At this time Matsuda Saki runs up to him, who asks her grandfather where Akita is. He says that she returned from school too quickly. A girl with blonde hair, trying to catch her breath, says that she ran so fast, but missed him. But she used to think that all awakened ones were greedy for money and worthless, but Mr. Akita is not like that at all. But it's time for them to go home, because they have a lot to do. The action takes place in the company Clean Water. Yuriko Seki walks into the office. One of the employees greets her, calling Yuriko Senpai and wishing her a good morning. The woman sits down at her desk and says that she will try to finish the report on the cleaning of the dungeons for the week as soon as possible. Another employee asks her to leave the report for him to check. Yuriko Seki looks at the computer monitor and says that not a single large dungeon has been cleared this week but two medium-sized buildings have been cleared, and more recently as many as eight small dungeons have been cleared, which no one has thought about for a long time. They are all in the same area. The woman with dark hair thinks that maybe some other company sent its team there, but no, in such a short time, even one dungeon can only be barely cleared, even if it is small, but there are as many as eight of them. Maybe it just happened that several dungeons in the same area were cleared at the same time. She sees the name of the awakened one who cleared these dungeons and is shocked to think that Akita, 
The one with the F rank cleared them, did Akita do it? Other female employees approach Yuriko Seki and ask Senpai what's the matter if Akita is the same one in her table. For Akita to clear as many as eight dungeons, it can't be, there are so many small dungeons. He was lucky with them, but he definitely can't cope with bigger buildings. In small buildings, after all, only goblins are found. As long as they work here, they have always cleaned only large or medium-sized buildings. It is simply unprofitable for clean water to direct them to such small buildings since they do not earn a lot of money. But Akita is well done, he himself would not be able to do that, probably. Seki Yuriko clenches her fist and gets up from her seat, heading for the exit, smiling sweetly and saying that she will just rest and come back. She thinks that the newcomers have already completely imbued with the spirit of the company, and believe that they are strong only at her expense. They have no idea how difficult it is to clean up eight buildings. Yes, even if they are small, but what kind of work has been done? But how did Akita manage to do this? Did he really get a strong team? No, Akita has rank F and of all the existing cards, only the elixir was available to him. She doubts that someone invited him to his place so quickly. Besides, if Akita had worked in a team, then she would have been written in the call. Did Akita find a rare strong card in the dungeon that he was clearing with the Terra team? But if so, then such a strong card could just hurt him because he couldn't cope with it. The action takes place in a cafe. Akita Hikaru is sitting at the table with a glass of coffee. At this time he receives a message saying that the sender apologizes for writing so suddenly. This is Yuriko from the Pure Water Consulting Department, whether he is free today or tomorrow. The embarrassed young man quickly types that he is free, and they can meet at any time, thinking that he is really being offered a date. The action takes place outside in the evening. Nakamura Rintero asks Heiskawa Miho what it is, because he just offered her a walk for company, and she suddenly ran ahead. The girl with red hair asks if Nakamura has thought about the fact that she doesn't want to be followed everywhere. The young man says that she could have said that right away. She's been kind of depressed and closed lately. He really wants to help her. Maybe it's time for her to stop worrying about Akita quitting. She should try to do something new or make new acquaintances. Heiskawa Miho exclaims that he sees Akita Senpai and quickly runs forward, leaving Nakamura Rintero asking her to wait far behind. Seki Yuriko and Akita Hikaru meet outside the cafe and immediately go inside. Miho Hiskawa says it can't be. Is Akita Senpai and Yuriko Senpai together? Seki Yuriko apologizes for suddenly deciding to meet. She just couldn't stop thinking about him. The blushing Akita Hikaru asks again. The woman with dark hair says she thinks he somehow managed to get a strong gate card before he quit and most likely continues to use it. Is this true? She says that she will try to explain everything and shows the young man a table in which his name and rank are written next to the dungeons, because this is him. Akita Hikaru says that's right. He really cleaned up these dungeons and thinks that he just signed all these contracts yesterday. And everything has already become known in his former company. That's what an elite company means. Seki Yuriko asks how he managed to clear all these dungeons alone. Akita Hikaru awkwardly says that there are very weak monsters in all these dungeons. That's how everything successfully coincided and he was just lucky in general and thinks why Yuriko is so worried about him. And whether this is really a concern. Maybe she is just curious or the company ordered to find out more about him. He was sorry, but he would have to check her thoughts. A black and blue window pops up near a woman with black hair, in which it is written that the name of this creature Yuriko Seki, her rank C, her status, compares Akita with her younger brother. Her ability is called the gaze of justice. The next action will continue to question Akita. Akita Hikaru thinks what her status means and needs to try to find out. The young man in the black suit says that, of course, he is an awakened of the lowest rank, but still she should not worry so much about him because he is not her little brother. Seki Yuriko replies that Akita is right. He is not her younger brother, but maybe he will agree to listen to her. Then he will understand why she is so worried about him. Yuriko told him about her younger brother, who died while clearing the dungeon. That year, he studied at the university and, together with other students, decided to create his own awakened squad. They were very strong and talented, clearing one dungeon after another. In addition, some guys from this squad somehow managed to get hold of gate cards with a rarity level of S. There were several such cards in Japan, so it's not surprising that the squad of these guys soon attracted the attention of many companies. At one point, a terrible thing happened. One of the gate cards of the rarity level S suddenly went out of control and exploded. The dungeon collapsed, killing several people, including Yuriko's brother. Of course, the profession of an awakened one is very dangerous, but all risks can be minimized if you follow and no simple safety rules and take into account the limit of your strength. If you get a card of too high a rank, then one day you can lose control over it and terrible things will happen. Yuriko Seki says that she thought that he was able to get some kind of too strong card and immediately remembered her younger brother. 
Akita Hikaru thinks that it means Yuriko is really worried about him and says that he apologizes for making her worry so much, but he really just got lucky with the dungeons, nothing more, such a lucky coincidence. He decides that he shouldn't bother her once again with stories about strange strong gate cards, for now he will have to lie. A young man cheerfully says that. Besides, if he really had a really strong card, he would definitely stay working in clean water and hands the woman with black hair a grey gate card, saying that this is his new f rank card called Magic Projectile. He bought it on benefits after dismissal. Iriko Seki looks at the gate card, which says that the name of this card is a Magic Projectile. Its rarity level is F. There are no special abilities. The cardholder is able to inflict small damage to opponents and says that this is not a fake and he does not have other cards. She apologizes for being so fixated on this and in vain I was worried. Akita Hikaru says that she shouldn't apologize. He is pleased to know that someone is worried about him and he should have told her about it. Soon they leave the cafe and Nakamura Rintero immediately approaches them, calling out to Akita Senpai. Heiskawa Miho asks from behind the bush what he is doing and also comes up to them. Alkita Hikaru greets former colleagues, and Rintero Nakamura says that he thought he would be surprised by them. The young man in the black suit thinks that he has noticed the two of them for a long time. Nakamura Rintero asks how the date went. Yuriko Seki asks Miho not to worry, since there was no date. Alkita Hikaru thinks with amazement and sadness how it did not happen. Rintero Nakamura thinks it is somehow sad. Miho Heiskawa happily thinks that there was no date and asks Akita Senpai if in that case he would like to go out to dinner with her. The young man with brown hair says that she is only in the way. Can't she see that they have a personal meeting? The girl with red hair replies that Yuriko said that they are not on a date right now, which means that she can call Senpai wherever she wants. Akita Hikaru looks at the black and blue window of his kohai, which says that the name of this creature is Nakamura Rintero. His rank is F. His status is an attempt to make Miho pay attention to himself. The next action will be to distract Miho from Akita and thinks that everything is clear. Nakamura just likes Miho. He tells them to cool down and fears that talking to Miho may have a bad effect on her reputation. Because he no longer works in clean water, he and Yuriko have already discussed everything they wanted, so it's time for him to go home. Rintero Nakamura exhales with relief, and Mio Heiskawa looks after him sadly. The awakened one smiles approvingly at the younger colleague, who looks at him in amazement. It seems that he has gone through too many dungeons at one time. Today only Yuriko Seki came to him, but who knows what kind of guests will descend on him in the future. He should act much more carefully. The action takes place in the company Clean Water. Naguchi Kenji asks where he's going and let him wait for them. Ryoko Harayama asks if he's not interested in learning more about Akita. Shai Drutera waves them off and asks them to shut up. Didn't he tell them to stop all the talk about Akita? They still have a lot of work and no time to chat. Naguchi Kenji irritably asks what is wrong with him. And Ryoko Harayama assumes that he got a message from the management for Akita because he made such a mistake in that dungeon and immediately quit. Maybe he managed to complain where he should. He was sure that the dungeon boss would eat him. If he knew that he would be able to survive, he would have come up with a better way to get rid of him. It's a good thing Tyra managed to recover before they did. Otherwise they would all have died there. A young man with red hair looks at the table and thinks that this Akita seems to have just quit, but has already made good money on clearing small dungeons. How annoying he is. He is a pathetic weakling who can't even cope with a goblin. Naguchi Kenji says that since Terra doesn't tell them anything, they will ask Sarazawa's boss everything at once. Ryoko Harayama agrees that it's a good idea to ask the top of the company right away. They go to his office, apologize for disturbing him, and ask Chief Sarazawa for permission to enter, as they would like to discuss something with him. Sarazawa Koji looks at them very unfriendly. Sarazawa Koji looks at them very unfriendly, but lets them in and asks what's the matter. Naguchi Kenji says they wanted to ask something about Akita. This is a guy who recently quit. Sarazawa Koji says that he remembered him and asks what is the matter. The young man with red hair abruptly waves his hand, almost knocking Ryoko Harayama off the chair and fervently says that this Akita prevented them from attacking and destroying the boss in the dungeon. And now his name and their company are flashing everywhere in the dungeon cleanup reports, although he has already resigned. Does he think Akita is abusing his status their companies? Sarazawa Koji asks if they don't find it strange that this guy quit quite recently, but still continues to clean up as if behind the company's back. He understood them, but how would they like to fix this situation? Naguchi Kenji suggests that he somehow put pressure on Akita to stop allowing himself such insolence. The boss gets up from the table and says that. Therefore, they want to take advantage of his status and thus eliminate a competitor, and they have more specific ideas. Naguchi says that, of course, there is. The action takes place in the Department of Awakened Affairs and Research, the Dungeon Clearing Branch. Akita Hikaru thinks he needs to decide which dungeon he wants to go to. This is the dungeon clearing branch, like the department, this place is under government control. 
Records of all discovered dungeons are kept here. The awakened one can choose a suitable dungeon for himself and register to clean it up. There are also cases when the owner of a building that has become a dungeon directly asks for help, as Mr. Matsuda did. But still, most often the awakened get a new job in this place. Bakita Hikaru puts his awakened identity card to the scanner and looks in amazement at the monitor, which says that this is Akita Hikaru's personal page of rank F. The number of dungeons available to him is zero. The young man in a black suit does not understand what is the matter and looks at neighboring scanners, which display the natural number of available dungeons. Having understood nothing, he goes to the information desk and calls out to the employee, saying that it seems to him that one of the terminals is malfunctioning, because for some reason the available dungeons are not displayed at all. A middle-aged man with glasses and slicked back hair says that he will check everything now and says that he recently quit clean water. Akita Hikaru says that it was last week, and now he wants to register as a private awakened and work independently. The man adjusts his glasses and says that he sees no point in hiding anything from him. They received an order from Pure Water to restrict his access to the dungeons. He can do nothing for him, because his hands are tied. Apparently, they felt that he was ruining the company's reputation. Large companies often do this. The Awakened One asks if he can't get into any of the dungeons now. A middle-aged man with glasses and slicked back hair says that there is one dungeon, although he is not sure if it will suit him. Akita Hikaru happily asks to be shown. An employee of the Department of Awakened Affairs and Research says that the dungeon is quite dangerous. Let him make sure that Clean Water does not plan something against him again, whether he is ready to take risks. It happens that several teams compete at once in clearing one dungeon. Of course, in this case its owner must pay a considerable amount, but this way the chance that the dungeon will definitely be cleared increases significantly. If the dungeon owner usually hires one team, she may not be able to clean up, but if there are two or more teams, someone will be able to do it. Only in his case, everything was done as if they specifically wanted to get rid of him. Apparently, Clean Water decided to leave him the most difficult dungeon to clean up in order to intimidate him and have him either immediately give up this job or fail to clean up. The young man in the black suit remembers Naguchi Kenji and Ryoko Hariyama and thinks that this was probably their plan. Leaving the building of the Department of Awakened Affairs and Research, Akita Hikaru thinks that maybe someone else besides Terra has found out about his power, but he will still take a chance. The action takes place near the dungeon of Rank C, the former office of the restaurant chain. Akita Hikaru approaches the entrance to the dungeon and hears a familiar voice asking him how he is doing. Turning around, he sees Elite Awakened Pure Water, next to which black and blue windows hang, in which it is written that the name of this creature is Naguchi Kenji, his rank is A, his status is Maki, his ability is called Fire Warrior. The next action will be to speak taunts Akita. The name of this creature is Ryoko Hurayama. Her rank is a her status is mocked. Her ability is called the Warrior of the Winds. The next action will be to look down on Akita. Naguchi Kenji puts his hand to the bridge of the Awakened One's nose and says that he was wearing glasses with them. What happened? Ryoko Hurayama mockingly says that it seems he has become so impoverished that he cannot even buy new glasses for himself. The young man with red hair roars with laughter. And Akita Hikaru says that he is glad to see Naguchi and Hurayama again. Naguchi Kenji says he can't believe he really had the courage to come here. How annoying he is. Akita Hikaru thinks they planned it themselves. Ryoko Hurayama says that they came here first, so let him go the other way, and the young man agrees. Naguchi Kenji says that he will go straight to the lair of monsters, but he will not be able to cope with even one weak monster. He will definitely run away right away. The lead awaken one start betting on how long it will take Akita to finally convince himself of his uselessness. A woman with short hair thinks it takes 30 minutes, and a guy with red hair is sure that it will take only 15 minutes. Akita Hikaru silently walks off down another road while they stand at the fork and laugh, thinking that it's such a shame. But he once admired them. At this time, a notification window pops up, which says that monsters are seen nearby, and opponents come out to the awakened one, next to whom it is written in a black and blue window that this is a demonic steed. It belongs to the class of humanoids. Its character is hostile. Their abilities are called Swift Attack and Rush. Their rank is D. Akita Hikaru summons the Azure Samurai with the gate card and sends him on the attack. His blow knocks several demonic steeds to the ground, but a new black and blue window immediately pops up, which says that the name of this creature is a demonic steed. Its status is preparing for an attack. Its abilities are called a rapid attack of rank D, a dash of rank D. The next action will be to use a rapid attack. A young man in a black suit uses a skill called triple blade strike. A black and blue window pops up which says that the data has been updated, the monsters have been destroyed and the floor has been cleared. The action takes place on the 11th floor of a C-ranked dungeon. Akita Hikaru stands in front of a huge centaur, 
next to which hangs a black and blue window in which it is written that this is the boss of a dungeon called Centaur. He belongs to the class of humanoids. His character is hostile, his abilities are called Swift Attack, Rampage, Hammer of Fate, his rank is B. The Awakened One thinks that really he is so fast he reached the dungeon boss. He never met anyone from pure water. However, it doesn't matter, we need to finish everything as soon as possible. He summons the Azure Samurai with the gate card and sends him on the attack. The action takes place on the third floor of the dungeon. Naguchi Kenji barely fights off the demonic steed and angrily asks if someone will help him. Ryoko Hurayama helps him with a blow from the Warrior of the Winds and the monster is defeated. A young man with red hair drinks water and mutters that these monsters are much stronger than goblins. They also possess the fire element, so it's hard for him to deal with them. The woman with short hair says that at this rate it will take them four hours to get to the dungeon boss and asks what he thinks is going on with Akita. Naguchi Kenji angrily asks if she sees them working here, if she thinks he has already escaped from here. He kicks their low-ranking escort and shouts that he has stopped standing. It's time to lead them on. He staggers and almost falls. At this time, the dungeon disappears and a normal office building remains. The elite awakened one shout in amazement that this can't be. It can't be that this Akita has cleared the entire dungeon. Akita Hikaru presses the button on the first floor and thinks that, apart from the boss, he spent about an hour cleaning this dungeon here, but did not expect that there would be as many as 11 levels, and even a boss of rank B. When the dungeon boss dies, all the magic inside him disappears. In general, when clearing a dungeon, the most important thing for the awakened one is to get to his boss as soon as possible and defeat him, then the building will become the same. Another very important task of the Awakened One is to clean up the dungeon and destroy its boss so as not to completely destroy the building itself and cause minimal damage to it. The elevator arrives on the first floor. The Awakened One exits and immediately encounters the employees of the Clean Water Company. Naguchi Kenji furiously calls out to him, to which Akita Hikaru confusedly replies that he sees that they have not made much progress, although they are above him in rank. The Elite Awakened blush with anger. And he continues to say that they took so long to get there that he got bored and decided to fight the dungeon boss without them. All the employees of the clean water company mutter in amazement how he did it alone and in such a short time. And the young man in a black suit cheerfully says goodbye and thanks them for their help. The elite awakened of Ranka don't understand how he did it. Ryoko Hurayama suddenly remembers that Akita understands the layout of buildings. Naguchi Kenji suggests that he might have known some workarounds and chosen a path that does not have monsters. He decides to put pressure on the awakened research department again and ensure that Akita reopens access only to the dungeons that they have. Next time, they'll take even more people and clear the dungeon before he does. The action takes place in the Department of Awakened Research, the branch for clearing dungeons. A middle-aged man with glasses and slicked back hair says in amazement that he really coped with everything and even overtook the staff of the Clean Water Company. Akita Hikaru shows him the centaur's magic stone and tells him that's how it is. An employee of the Department of Awakened Research, the branch for dungeon cleaning, reverently examines a huge magic stone and says that it doesn't really matter to him who exactly cleared the dungeon, but for pure water it is of great importance. Akita Hikaru asks if there are any new dungeons for him. A middle-aged man with glasses and slicked back hair adjusts his glasses and says that there are only those dungeons left here again, which are claimed by the Clean Water Company. The Awakened One enthusiastically says that he will take on everything. An employee of the Awakened Research Department, the Dungeon Cleanup Branch, once again anxiously asks if he is sure and what will happen if he fails, to which Akita Hikaru replies with the same enthusiasm that he is sure and will cope with everything. The action takes place in a dungeon. Akita Hikaru stands in front of a dungeon boss called the Centaur Hog, which belongs to the humanoid class. His character is hostile, his abilities are called Defense Penetration and Rapid Attack, his rank is B. The Awakened summons the Azure Samurai Gate card and uses a skill called Lightning Attacks, defeating him again in one hit. The black and blue notification window pops up, which says that the dungeon data has been updated, the dungeon boss has been defeated, and the dungeon has been cleared of monsters in 300 seconds. The elevator arrives on the first floor. The Awakened One exits and immediately encounters the employees of the Clean Water Company. Naguchi Kenji furiously calls out to him, to which Akita Hikaru greets him again and says that they haven't seen each other for a long time. Ryoko Hurayama exclaims that how could such an F-ranked person possibly go further than them? Elite Awakened Rank A. Never mind, they'll try again. The action takes place in the dungeon of Rank D, the former office of a carbonated drinks company. A young man in a black suit summons an Azure Samurai with a gate card and uses a skill called Triple Blade Strike, again defeating the dungeon boss in one hit. A black and blue notification window pops up, 
which says that the dungeon data has been updated, the dungeon boss has been defeated, and the dungeon has been cleared of monsters in 300 seconds. The elevator arrives on the first floor. The awakened one comes out and immediately encounters a huge number of employees of the clean water company, saying that this is such an unexpected meeting. But it seems that he cleaned up everything too quickly again. This time they don't say anything at all. The action takes place in the main office of the clean water company. Naguchi Kenji kicks some things while cursing at Akita. Ryoko Hurayama looks at him and asks if he doesn't think they're both going to get in trouble for sending instructions to the awakened research department on his behalf without the knowledge of Chief Serizawa. And even not a single dungeon has been cleared. A young man with red hair presents Serizawa Koji's angry face in front of him and says that something needs to be done urgently. We need to figure out how to lure Akita into a trap. At this time, Nakamura Rintero passes from behind with a cup of coffee and hears his senpai's name, immediately understanding what is being discussed. Meanwhile, Naguchi Kenji furiously says that stop trying to outrun him, you just have to wait for the right moment and attack him. Ryoko Hurayama says that this could very well work. Nakamura Rintero is terrified that his senpai is in danger and should be warned about it. A young man with golden eyes goes behind a vending machine and dials Akita Hikaru who is very happy to hear from him and asks how he and Miho are doing. Nakamura Rintero exclaims that it can all wait because Naguchi is trying to figure out a way to make him fail the assignment. He had heard him say that he wanted to ambush Akita the next time he went to clean up the dungeon. The Awakened One thanks him for the information. At this time, Ryoko Hurayama approaches the machine, who is surprised to think who Nakamura is talking to in the middle of the working day. Nakamura Rintero at this time tells Akita Senpai to be as careful as possible. He could not even think that it could come to such a point that a former colleague would try to kill him. An elite awakened of Ranka realizes that Nakamura has been communicating with Okita all this time and gave him their entire plan with Naguchi. Well, then you'll need to change the plan a bit and use Nakamura to outsmart Okita. Nakamura Rintero relieved resets the call and exhales. But at this time he is called by Ryoko Hurayama who is standing near the window and says that she has one request for him. The action takes place in the dungeon of Rank C, the former office of the company for the production of food additives. Alkita Hikaru enters the dungeon and is amazed to see Ryoko Hurayama and Naguchi Kenji Nakamura Rintero as part of the team. A young man in a black suit asks his former junior colleague about what he forgot in Naguchi's team. Nakamura Rintero replies that after their conversation, they called him to their place and said that he would go on the next mission as part of their team. Naguchi told him that somehow Akita manages to clear the dungeon before them, so he decided to assemble a new, faster team that could beat him. Akita Hikaru says that this is all very strange, and the young man with golden eyes enthusiastically says that this may be his chance to prove to everyone that he is actually very strong. The young man in the black suit thinks that he can only dream about it and says that everything is clear to him, but he still should not lose his vigilance, since anything can happen here, especially with Naguchi and Hurayama at the head of the team. Nakamura Rintero confidentially tells Senpai to be careful too, and today he will defeat the monsters faster than he does. Naguchi Kenji shouts at him to stop meaningless conversations, and, turning to Okita, says that today they will clear the dungeon before he does, and calls Nakamura to follow him. The young man with golden eyes turns to his former senior colleague for the last time, and he thinks that Nakamura is just beaming with joy, just like himself in the first days of work. Maybe he should let their team win today for Nakamura's sake. But still, something bothers him, but he can't figure out what it is. The action takes place on the 11th floor of the dungeon of Rank S. Akita Hikaru thinks that here is the boss of the dungeon. It looks like some kind of half-beast or centaur again. There were monsters of this kind in previous dungeons too. A black and blue window pops up, which says that this is the boss of a dungeon called the Horn Centaur. He belongs to the humanoid class, his character is hostile, his abilities are called Swift Attack, Hammer of Fate and Rampage. His rank is B+. The young man in the black suit thinks that everything is very strange, since he destroyed almost all the monsters on the way here, and he never met anyone from the Pure Water Company. He assumes that while he was clearing the rest of the floors, Naguchi's team just took a shortcut in a straight line. A black and blue window pops up, which says that the data has been updated and other awakened people have been found on the floor. At this time, Naguchi's team appears and Nakamura Rintero exclaims that they need to be careful, since they seem to have reached the dungeon boss. Naguchi Kenji asks where Akita is. The young man with golden eyes says that he is probably not here. An elite awakened of Ranka waves his fist contentedly and says that they were finally able to get ahead of him. Akita Hikaru, who is hiding behind a stone, thinks that he hopes that they will quickly cope with him and the most important thing is that Nakamura is alright, let him show his strength to everyone. Meanwhile, Naguchi Kenji reminds Tom not to forget to use the card he gave him, because with it they will defeat this boss in no time. Ryoko Hurayama approvingly asks him not to let him down, 
and Nakamura Rintero, who is clutching a familiar red card in his hand, says that he will not let him down. Aokita Hikaru is horrified to realize that this is the same card that Shijiru Tara almost killed him with, and thinks that it is necessary to cover Nakamura. The monster activates, and Naguchi Kenji commands to prepare the cards. Elite Awake and Ranka begin to attack the monster, ordering Nakamura Rintero to run forward. He and Akita Hikaru take off almost simultaneously. The latter thinks that he couldn't believe that they had found and decided to use this release card again. When the fight gets too unequal, Naguchi Kenji yells at Nakamura to use the gate card. A young man with golden eyes begins to call for release with a gate card, while Okita Hikaru calls for an Azure Samurai with a gate card, hoping that he will have time to save his friend. He uses a skill called Lightning Attack, and the boss of the dungeon called the Horn Centaur splits into two parts, exploding and throwing all the awakened in different directions. The gate card called Liberation also splits into two halves. Hikaru Akita appears from the clouds of dust, who thinks that he has managed to do it after all. A black and blue window pops up which says that the name of this creature is the Horn Centaur. Its status is unable to fight, its abilities are reset, it is dead. A purple magic stone appears, above which a black and blue window pops up, in which it is written that the name of this creature is the magic stone of the Horn Centaur. Its status is a treasure from a monster, it can be picked up. A black and blue window pops up, which says that 9230 units of experience have been received. The rarity of the gate card called Azure Samurai has been increased. A young man in a black suit looks at the Elite Awaken lying on the stones and sees their black and blue windows, which say that the name of the creature is Kenji Naguchi. His rank is A, the status of unable to fight, the skills are Fire Warrior, loss of consciousness. A black and blue window hangs above a short-haired woman, in which it is written that the name of the creature is Ryoko Hurayama. Her rank is A, her status is unable to fight, her skills are Warrior of the Winds, loss of consciousness. He thinks that everything is just like last time. Only without Shijiru Terra, they decided to make Nakamura a bait for the monster now. He is afraid to imagine how many people before him died such a terrible death. A black and blue window hangs above the unconscious Rintero Nakamura, in which it is written that the name of this creature is Rintero Nakamura, his rank is F, his status is unable to fight, his skills are missing the gate map. The next step is to come to your senses. Akita Hikaru asks if Nakamura is okay. He opens his eyes and asks what happened. The Awakened One replies that everything is fine and the dungeon boss has already been defeated. Nakamura Rintero gets to his feet and asks if Senpai really did it and how he did it. Akita Hikaru says that he was given a trap card. It is capable of destroying the space surrounding the owner. Naguchi just used it as bait for the monster, so he and Hariyama praised him and supported him so much. He also asks Nakamura to tell everyone that the boss was killed by a trap card. Let him keep the magic stone, since it is very rare. It will be proof that he killed the boss. Nakamura Rintero lowers his head and flatly refuses to take the stone, because he should not be pitied. He wants to achieve results on his own, not with the help of indulgences. Nagachi and the others will wake up soon. Senpai needs to leave, but next time he really won't lose. Akita Hikaru says he will look forward to their next meeting. As he leaves, he thinks that he has offended Nakamura with his act, but this proves once again that he is a truly good awakened one. Perhaps now Naguchi will finally stay away from him. The action takes place in the main office of the Clean Water Company. Sarazawa Koji asks Naguchi Kenji and Ryoko Hariyama what they have been doing these two weeks. They silently shift from one foot to the other, and the boss continues to say that they got involved in a stupid competition with an awakened rank F and lost. Besides, they failed to complete any task and disgraced the whole company. They were definitely assigned the a rank for a reason. It seems to him that he is just wasting money on them. Naguchi Kenji mutters that there are unforeseen problems. Serizawa Koji says he probably should cut their salaries after all. At this time, Yuriko Seki asks permission to go to the office, who says that a meeting of the board of directors is taking place now and she was asked to notify him and find out if he will attend. The man says that he will be here soon, and the elite awakened Ranka are relieved to think that this time it has passed. The action takes place in the boardroom. Takeda, the executive director of Clean Water, says that this morning the Japanese government discovered a new dungeon and appealed to the Awakened for help, as they want to finally clean up Tokyo Airport. Everyone is buzzing enthusiastically, and the man continues to say that companies all over the country can compete for the right to clean up this place. Never before has such a large-scale cleanup been carried out. They need to try hard and defeat all competitors, then even foreign representatives may be interested in their services. We need to assemble a squad of their best awakened ones as soon as possible. Let them just imagine, because after cleaning the airport, their profits will rise many times. The CEO of the clean water company by the name of Kondo says that everything is correct and asks Sarazawa about his best fighters, since they only need them. Koji Sarazawa says they can rely on him, 
The action takes place in the Department of Awakened Research, the branch for clearing dungeons. Akita Hikaru gives a magic stone to an employee of the Research Department of the Awakened Research Department, the Dungeon Cleanup Branch, to confirm the dungeon cleanup. He says that Akita never ceases to amaze him, as he's still working alone. The young man in the black suit says that it is. The man with glasses says that he can offer him to take on that task. This morning, the government sent a request to clean up Tokyo Airport. It allowed everyone to participate, so that here clean water will no longer be able to oppress him, whether he will take up this case. Akita Hikaru says he'll take it. An employee of the Awakened Research Department, the Dungeon Clearing Branch, proudly says that this is definitely the biggest event of the year. Not only the largest companies will be able to try their hand, but also some kind of freelancers and newcomers, Awakened. This is the largest dungeon in the Kanto area, no, even in the whole country. And the reward, of course, will also be very big. The Awakened One enthusiastically thinks that at last he has a chance to use his gate cards to the fullest. He will definitely clean up the Tokyo Airport. Tokyo Airport Dungeon The mysterious effects of the abnormal thunderstorm affected not only multi-story buildings. Larger facilities, such as airports, also turned into dungeons. The handling of the airport in Tokyo, the main airport in the country, has dealt a severe blow to the Japanese economy. The damage from these consequences was simply incredible, so it was necessary to clean up this dungeon as soon as possible. But it's not that simple at all. As you know, the largest dungeon cleaning company in Japan is the Clean Water Company. Along with Hexa Delta, the company is very popular. In addition, a young company called the Land of Hawks has recently begun to gain strength and popularity. These three companies have repeatedly offered their services to the Japanese government to clean up the airport in Tokyo. But soon the government made a completely unexpected statement. It decided to try to attract as many awakened ones as possible, including those who work outside companies, and therefore made a kind of nationwide competition. The action takes place somewhere in the capital. Mr. Kurokawa, Director General of the Awakened Research Department, asks Sarazawa Koji what he thinks about the airport situation. He thanks them for the invitation and says that they switched to you too quickly. Mr. Kurokawa, Director General of the Awakened Research Department, says that he cannot believe that they will still have to open this dungeon to everyone, given that their competitors' teams have not been able to clear it and are stuck halfway through. Sarazawa Koji asks him not to worry, since clean water will definitely cope with everything. All previous failures were nothing more than accidents. The man with glasses says that he understood him and will continue to monitor how they are doing. He hopes that clean water will not let them down this time. They start eating, and Mr. Kurokawa is happy to hope that in the future his company will only please him. The man in the green suit hopes that he will be able to work with him again in the future. Mr. Kurokawa, Director General of the Awakened Research Department, says that he even feels a little sorry for those poor devils who will come to this dungeon. They don't even have a chance. The government is just trying to create a fuss in this way. Well, we can only wish them all good luck. The action takes place at the meeting place for the participants of the airport cleanup in Tokyo. Akita Hikaru thinks there are so many people here. Awakened people from all over the country gathered for this sweep, and yet so far he sees mostly awakened ranks D and C, a few people with rank B. But so far, no one with rank A has been seen, although he has seen several rank awakened ones outside, but none of them have entered yet. At this time, a black and blue notification window pops up, which says that awakened rank A has been detected. Shaijiru Tera, Naguchi Kenji and Ryoko Hariyama enter the room. A black and blue window hangs above the team leader, in which it is written that the name of this creature is Shai Drew Terra. Its rank is A. Its status is neutral. Its ability is called the Warrior of the Sea. The next action will be to walk around the room. Akita Hikaru thinks that, of course, the three of them have rank A, but will they be able to cope with the dungeon with such a small composition? The action takes place in one of the rooms. Kiko Awasa, auditor of the Arank Awakened Research Department, asks Mr. Takasa if he will attend the briefing, which will begin very soon. The man with blue hair, Hiroshi Takasu, head of the research department of the Arank Awakened Research Department, tells her that he would probably prefer to stay here. Kiko Awasa says that, as he could see, none of the major companies, except for Clean Water, decided to take up the cleanup of the airport in Tokyo. Hiroshi Takasu replies that Clean Water is somehow too lucky in this regard. The auditor of the Awakened Research Department exclaims that she suspects that the Director General or the Deputy Secretary of the Department may be involved. Some of them may be secretly helping the company. The head of the Research Department of the Awakened Research Department says that they don't have any evidence yet, but he will definitely get to the truth. And yet it seems to him that other giant companies will also decide to participate, only they will not act as openly as Clean Water did. It's hard to imagine how many Awakened low ranks will die in this dungeon. 
Let them continue to monitor the rest of the companies. We need to make sure that there are no other problems. The action takes place in a presentation room filled with awakened ones. It says on the screen that you need to wait for the start of the presentation on the tactics of cleaning the airport dungeon in Tokyo. An introductory briefing, three minutes left before the start. After this time, a voice is heard from the speaker, which greets the respected participants and asks them to look at the screen. Now they will see footage from the airport dungeon in Tokyo, which was taken a month ago. Two awakened people with backpacks on their backs are walking through a large desert. Soon one of them shouts something and points to the sky, in which a blue dragon appears. The monster knocks the awakened ones off their feet, and then a red dragon appears and showers them with a hail of fiery spit. There are whispers in the hall that there are two dungeon bosses here, they definitely cannot cope with them. The voice keeps saying that this dungeon has two bosses. Both monsters belong to the same species called flying dragons. Their rank was defined as a rank. In the hall, they say very excitedly and fearfully that they are seeing monsters with Ranka for the first time. They heard that Hexa Delta had a lot of employees missing at some point. Now it is clear why it is so difficult to cope with a monster of Ranka. So, those who shot these shots are already dead. Akita Hikaru is the only one sitting silently watching the presentation. Dungeon bosses are dangerous even alone. But the main problem is that if you attack one of the dragons, the second one immediately teleports to him and together they will attack with even greater force. In other words, a group of awakened ones will always have to fight two bosses at once. In the hall, they exclaim that no one can cope with two or rank bosses at once. Enlisting the support of three large companies Clean Water, Land of Hawks and Hexa Delta, they decided to divide all the awakened into two teams. Their main task is to reach the locations of both bosses at the same time and attack them at the same time in both parts of the airport. That is, in the east and west wings. They say in the hall that each team will have to fight only one boss this way. It's smart. The underground of the airport in Tokyo can be divided into two parts, two wings, east and west. Each part of the dungeon has its own boss. It was decided to attack both wings at the same time, thus eliminating the possibility that one of the bosses teleports to help the other. However, still do not forget that they even have the rank of both of them. In general, two teams were eventually assembled. First of all the elite awakened from large companies were distributed. Their achievements and victories in other dungeons were evaluated there, as well as the status of the company as a whole. Akita Hikaru joined the reserve team of the West Wing, as did many other freelancers, and Nakamura was on the East Wing team. He joyfully greets Akita Senpai, and above his head there is a black and blue window in which it is written that the name of this creature is Rintero Nakamura. His rank is F, his status is neutral, his ability is called a protective barrier. His next action will be to chat with Akita Senpai. Akita Hikaru says that even Nakamura is here, and who is he with? At this time, Elite Awakened Ranka from the Pure Water Company appear. A black and blue window hangs above the team leader, in which it is written that the name of this creature is Shydru Terra, its rank is A, its status is neutral, its ability is called the Warrior of the Sea, the next action will be to wait. The name of this creature is Kenji Nagachi, its rank is A, its status is neutral, its ability is called the Warrior of the Sea, the next action will be to wait. The name of this creature is Ryoko Hariyama. Her rank is A, her status is neutral, her ability is called Warrior of the Winds, her next action will be to wait. Ryoko Hariyama and Naguchi Kenji look at the low-ranking awakened ones. Shai Drew Terra turned away, and Akita Hikaru thinks that his life does not teach him anything and asks a friend if he is in the Terra team. Nakamura Rintero enthusiastically replies that this is not the case at all. Maybe it will sound amazing, but now he has his own band, and he is its leader. The senior awakened one joyfully congratulates him, and he continues to tell him that, of course, the team under the leadership of Terra and Naguchi is mainly responsible for the attack of the East Wing. But he got the main role among the awakened ones on support, of which they made a separate squad, and where will the Senpai dungeon be clean? Akita Hikaru says that he is in the reserve of the West Wing team. Nakamura Rintero asks him not to despair. He will achieve something someday too. By the way, even though he has rank F, for his good services he was given a D-rank rarity gate card called Protective Barrier, they believe in him so much, so he should especially try. They say goodbye, and the young man with purple eyes thinks that this is Nakamura's chance to prove himself, let him tell Miho everything. Suddenly, a black and red window pops up, which says that high-ranking awakened ones have been discovered. Akita Hikaru turns around and thinks that maybe even Chief Serizawa has come here. And indeed, not far from Shaidru Terra stands a man in a green suit, above which hangs a black and red window in which it is written that the name of this creature is Koji Serizawa. His rank is unknown, his status is unknown, his abilities are unknown, his further actions are unknown. He still doesn't know anything about him, except that his rank is obviously much higher than rank A. What kind of secrets is he hiding? Shaidru Terra says he believes they will just act according to Mr. Serizawa's plan for now. 
He says that many of their competitors have decided not to participate in this sweep, so this is just a great chance to show their best side. However, they will still have to work together with other small companies. Otherwise the cleanup plan could easily fail. Clean water has already done a lot for this country. They just have to clean up the airport in Tokyo. And when they do, the company's reputation will skyrocket. And not only reputation, he understands everything perfectly. Shai Drew Tara says he understands. Sarazawa Koji says that the younger the victim, the better. He's counting on him. The plan to clean up the airport in Tokyo began to be put into action. The action takes place in the underground of the airport in Tokyo, the West Wing. The dungeon is a huge desert area, which is very hot. Magic has greatly changed the surrounding space and it seems as if there will never be an end to this desert. All participants in the operation were given special suits, and all were provided with food and water supplies. However, as usual, the awakened higher ranks and privileges were greater. A low-ranked awakened one complains about the heat and asks if they have descended into the dungeon for sure. The other man shouts at him not to be distracted, because monsters can appear at any moment. Looking at a young man who drinks water from a bottle, he shouts that low-ranking people were not allowed to drink water. Let him not waste his resources, they were already given the least water. The low-ranked awakened apologizes and quickly closes his bottle. A high-ranking man says with irritation that they strain him a lot. Akita Hikaru is still walking with an impenetrable face and is silent. Their dungeon cleanup team consists mostly of elite awakened ones from large companies. On the one hand, freelancers like him are a kind of support for the elite. It sounds good, but in fact everything is not so rosy at all. In reality, they just carry things. Besides, if something suddenly goes wrong, they will be blamed for everything. As in pure water, the awakened of low ranks in this operation serve only as expendable material that can be sacrificed at the first opportunity. At this time, silhouettes of dragons appear in the sky, and a black and blue window pops up, which says that the data has been updated, monsters have been spotted nearby. Someone shouts that you need to keep an eye on the sky, as the monsters are approaching. A black and blue window pops up, which says that this is a flying lizard. It belongs to the class of flying dragon-like. Its character is hostile, its ability is called a powerful explosion, its rank is D. One of the high-ranking awakened ones commands everyone to get ready and raise their shields. All awakened with low ranks summon a protective barrier with the gate card. This gate card is called a protective barrier. Its rarity is of rank D. There are no properties of the element. It allows the owner to create a shield that protects against physical attacks. A highly ranked awakened summons a fire spearman with a gate card. This gate card is called the fire spearman. Its rarity is of rank B. It belongs to the element of fire. A warrior armed with a spear strikes at the enemy, burning and melting his armor, causing fire damage. He attacks the flying lizards, but cannot reach them. Flying lizards attack with a powerful explosion and throw the awakened in different directions. Akita Hikaru, who stepped aside during the battle, thinks that even the elite awakened ones were not at all ready for air attacks. Something must be done urgently, otherwise a lot of low-ranking guys will suffer. He goes behind the stone and calls the guardian goddess with the gate card. The awakened of the lower ranks mutter in amazement that they feel a surge of strength and do not understand that this has just happened. They easily evade the attacks of the flying lizards and ask why they began to move so fast. The high-ranking awakened ones are horrified to ask who did this and why they suddenly became so fast. The flying lizards begin to advance again, and the low-ranked awakened summon a magical hail of arrows with the gate card. This gate card is called the Magic Hail of Arrows. Its rarity is of rank F. It does not have the properties of the element. When activated, arrows appear that attack enemies in a user-defined direction. The low-ranked awakened ones attack the flying lizards with a magical hail of arrows and say in amazement that their attacks flew right on target, to think they really managed to defeat the monsters, did they really become stronger? Yes, they definitely did it, after all, they also have the strength. High-ranking awakened people look with displeasure at the rejoicing men and ask what it just was. How could someone with such a low rank deal with monsters, and even with such ease, and shout at them not to be distracted, but rather to help them? Akita Hikaru is quite thinking that who else is low ranking here now. Now he can protect everyone without revealing his abilities. Awakened ones with low ranks enthusiastically destroy monsters. Soon, magic stones appear from the flying lizards. And one of the awakened with a low rank picks him up and asks the leader that if he defeated that monster, then he will get the stone. He says with obvious displeasure that it is so. The man happily shares with his friends that this is his first magic stone. Another awakened one gently touches it and says that it must be very rare. That's lucky for them. The team leader says irritably that they infuriate him. A black and blue window pops up, which says that the data has been updated, activity has been noticed and monsters are nearby. One of the awakened ones shouts for everyone to be careful, as the monsters are approaching again. The awakened of the lower ranks ask their leader if they can also take part in this battle. 
They promise that they will definitely cover them. He reluctantly allows them, to which the men are very happy and exclaim that this time there are a lot more of them. They need to attack as soon as possible. Akita Hikaru thinks that it looks like this time the fight will be even more serious. We should increase our strength just in case. He calls the guardian goddess with the gate card again. This gate card enhances the physical and magical abilities of the Awakened, so now it will be much easier for Awakened with low ranks to deal with monsters of rank D or even rank C. The young man with purple eyes thinks what will happen if he uses the skill of this card more than once and calls the guardian goddess with the gate card twice. Immediately, he experiences a completely new sensation for himself and thinks that this is with him, as if it is no longer his body. Soon Akita Hikaru joins the battle using his gate card called the Magic Hail of Arrows of Rank F. And in a few minutes all the monsters are already lying on the ground. A black and blue window pops up, which says that the data has been updated and all the monsters nearby have been completely destroyed. The Awakened with low ranks enthusiastically shake hands and rejoice in their victory. Akita Hikaru thinks that if things go on like this, they will quickly clean up the entire west wing of the airport in Tokyo without any problems. If they set up camp right here, they can rest and gather their strength, and then they will definitely be ready for the arrival and attack of one of the bosses of this dungeon. The young man with purple eyes listens to his feelings in order to find out where the dungeon boss is now, and realizes that he is about a 30-minute walk from their camp. He feels a powerful magical force. It's either the boss from the east wing of the airport in Tokyo, but it doesn't seem to be him. He feels strong streams of magic in three places at once. Really there are three bosses in this dungeon. What if the third boss of this dungeon appears during their joint attack in the west and east wings of the airport dungeon in Tokyo? Both units will be severely depleted after the battle and a sudden attack by a strong boss can cause serious losses. But the report mentioned only two bosses. If he suddenly reports the presence of a third one now, his words are unlikely to be taken seriously. Then, if his guesses are correct, he will kill the third boss himself. The protective effect of the protective goddess will last for some time. He hopes that no one will notice how he leaves. Akita Hikaru calls the guardian goddess with the gate card again and rushes towards the third boss. He rushes past two low-ranked awakened ones at an incredible speed and one of them asks what it was just now. They tell him it's just the wind. Akita Hikaru runs through the desert and thinks that he is rushing at such a furious speed as if his body is flying. Even support cards can be incredibly powerful. He stops abruptly and thinks it looks like it's here. Looking around, the young man with purple eyes does not understand why he feels strong magic, but there is nothing around. Judging by the airport map, there used to be an observation tower here. It was somewhere in the middle between the east and west wings. Suddenly, a black and blue window pops up, which says that the dungeon data has been updated and an anomaly has been noticed in the sky. Akita Hikaru sees a funnel in front of him right in the air and thinks that the space in this place is distorted and you need to try to attack there. The Awakened One summons the Azure Samurai with the gate card and orders him to attack. After his attack, a black and blue window pops up abruptly, which says that the data has been updated and a new dungeon has been discovered nearby. Akita Hikaru is amazed to realize that there is a dungeon inside the dungeon, which is why he did not see any monsters here, but what kind of power a monster must have in order to pull off such a thing and hide an entire dungeon. A black and blue window pops up, which says that the dungeon data has been updated and activity has been noticed, monsters are nearby. Dragons fly out of a crack in the sky, which was pierced by an azure samurai, near which a black and blue window hangs, in which it is written that this is a mighty flying lizard. It belongs to the class of flying dragon-like. Its character is hostile. Its abilities are called a powerful explosion, diving down, piercing scream, its rank is D+. A special black and blue window pops up, which says that the name of this creature is a mighty flying lizard. Its status is preparing to attack. Its abilities are called a powerful explosion of rank D. Diving down of rank D, a piercing scream of rank C, the next action will be to use a piercing scream of rank C. Akita Hikaru painfully claps his ears, barely while retaining the ability to pull out the gate card and summon the Azure Samurai with it, using a skill called the Dance of Blades and exclaiming that there is no time to mess with them for a long time, you need to get to the boss as quickly as possible. He calls the Guardian Goddess with the gate card again and rushes past the mighty flying lizards into the dungeon, thinking that this way he can run faster. At this rate, he could be on the top floor right away. The dragons just stare after him in amazement. The action takes place near the dungeon at the Tokyo airport, in the surveillance center of the operation. A man in a black suit calls out to Mrs. Iwasaki and says that a few minutes ago their radars detected strange activity in the dungeon. The bosses of the western and eastern wings are displayed on the radar. The eastern and western teams are not far from them, and quite far to the north there is a large red spot that the radar cannot identify. Kiko Iwasaki says she doesn't understand why the radars suddenly reacted, 
because there shouldn't be anything in this place. In any case, Takasu should be doing this, not her, by the way, where he is now. The man answers her that he has some kind of personal meeting right now. Kiko Iwasaki orders him to contact him as soon as possible. At this time, Hiroshi Takasu approaches Koji Serizawa, who is standing near the large window, and says that he was finally able to meet him. The man turns around and says, Well, what a meeting with Takasu, or more correctly, the head of Takasu's research department will be. The man with blue hair says that he has also risen in office. He has heard that Sarazawa is on good terms with the top, isn't it? Sarazawa Koji chuckles and asks what's the big deal. Takasu Hiroshi exclaims that he does not know what he is up to, but he promises that he will certainly find out all the secrets that he is hiding from them. Koji Sarazawa calmly says that he will tell him one very important thing that Takasu should remember. In their world, justice and honesty do not decide so much. The man with blue hair grimaces in displeasure, but at this time one of the employees runs up to them and exclaims that a mess. Iwasaki asked Mr. Takasu to return to her urgently. He says that he will come now, but as he leaves, he turns to one of the heads of the clean water company for the last time. After Takasu Hiroshi leaves, Sarazawa Koji asks Tara on the phone if they have prepared everything there. Shindru Tara replies that they have really prepared everything and can start at any minute. The boss says that these auditors already know everything about their movements and the signal for help will be the signal to start action. After the signal, they must act according to the plan, whether everything is clear to him. The action takes place in a hidden dungeon on the top floor. A black and red window pops up, which says that the data has been updated and the monster's strength exceeds the rank. A huge dragon appears out of the darkness surrounded by small dragons. A black and blue window pops up next to it, which says that this is the boss of a dungeon called the Thunder Flying Lizard. He belongs to the dragon-like class, his character is hostile, his rank is a plus, his abilities are called Tail Strike, Capture, Lightning Flash, Teleportation. Akita Hikaru anxiously thinks that this is really the boss, he has such a high rank, he has never heard of such people. A black and red window pops up which says that the boss uses the skill after two seconds. A special black and blue window pops up next to him, which says that the name of this creature is Thunder Flying Lizard, its status is preparing to attack. Its ability is called a Lightning Flash of Rank A+. Its next action will be to use a Lightning Flash of Rank A+. The Thunderous Flying Lizard attacks with a multitude of lightning bolts, which Akita Hikaru barely manages to dodge. The monster's blow leaves a huge molten funnel with lava inside and the young man with purple eyes thinks that he has such a strong blow. He destroyed even his monster defenders, just kills everyone indiscriminately. If he had not activated the goddess protector skill in advance, he would probably be dead now. That's what an A-plus rank boss means. I wonder if he can destroy it with his gate cards. The boss of the dungeon is the strongest monster, which, as a rule, hides on the last floors. Even professional awakened ones can find it difficult to deal with a boss of equal rank. And if the boss's strength reaches rank A, then it becomes almost impossible to deal with him alone. A special black and blue window pops up, which says that the name of this creature is the Mighty Flying Lizard. Its status is preparing to attack. The next action will be to use a dive down of rank D. The Mighty Flying Lizards rush to attack. And Akita Hikaru thinks that they decided to attack all at once in order to prevent him from dodging. The young man with purple eyes barely dodges numerous attacks by powerful flying lizards. But at this time a new black and blue window pops up, which says that the name of this creature is Thunder Flying Lizard. Its status is preparing for a joint attack. Its ability is called a Lightning Flash of Rank A+. Its next action will be to use a Flash Lightning Bolts of A+. Plus gray. The Awakened One thinks that since the Thunder Flying Lizard's Lightning Strike alone is so dangerous, then ordinary Awakened Ones have no chance against such a team attack. Alkita Hikaru dodges the blow of the dungeon boss and sees a lot of black and blue windows next to him in which it is written that 9999 units of experience have been obtained. The level of the gate card called the Goddess Defender has been increased. 9999 units of experience have been obtained. The level of the gate card called the Goddess has been increased Defender. 999 skill units were obtained. A skill called Faster Than Lightning was obtained. 999 skill units were obtained. A skill called Evasion was obtained. 999 skill units were obtained. A skill called Vortex Control was obtained. 9999 experience units were obtained. The level of the gate card called Goddess Defender was increased. He thinks that although he is just dodging their attacks so far, his experience and card level are growing. How great are his risks now that they give so many things at once? One wrong move and he would be finished. This time he would not hold back. A young man with purple eyes calls for an Azure Samurai gate card and uses a skill called Lightning Strike. Immediately he calls for a Dark Double-Headed Serpent gate card and uses a skill called a Flash of Dark Flame. They rush into the attack, and Akita Hikaru thinks with great excitement whether it worked and if two strong cards fail, 
Then what should he do? The smoke slowly dissipates, and finally the awakened one sees the chopped and melted thunder flying lizard. A black and blue window pops up, which says that the dungeon data has been updated, the dungeon boss has been defeated. Unable to believe his eyes, Akita Hikaru asks if he could really handle such a strong boss. Black and blue windows pop up which say that 999 skill units have been obtained. A skill called Thunderclaps has been obtained. The dungeon data has been updated. 9999 experience units have been obtained and a skill called Merciless Massacre has been obtained. The Awakened One thinks that he defeated the A-plus rank boss from the secret dungeon the first time. Then how great is his strength? A black and blue window pops up, which says that the dungeon data has been updated. The hidden dungeon has been cleared and the merge with another dungeon will occur in 300 seconds. The action takes place near the dungeon at the Tokyo airport, in the surveillance center of the operation. A man in a black suit calls out to Mr. Takasa and says that the radars have detected some anomalies again. Takasu Hiroshi approaches him and orders him to show it to him. He points to the screen and says that a large cluster of monsters has suddenly appeared in this area. Kiko Iwasaki and Takasu Hiroshi exclaim that there shouldn't be any boss in this area. Suddenly, the huge red spot disappears, and the woman with black hair suggests that maybe the sensors are broken. The man with blue hair thinks that they have just seen a monster of monstrous strength, as he instantly disappears with a bunch of small monsters, perhaps it is a mistake, but what if not? Takasu Hiroshi orders both teams to be warned of a possible threat, just in case. They will hope that nothing happens. The action takes place in the West Wing, in the temporary camp of the team. Akita Hikaru runs there and, assessing the situation, thinks that they seem to be just preparing for the boss's attack, which means he managed to. One of the high-ranking Awakened Ones impolitely calls out to him and asks if he has checked that territory, if there are any monsters nearby. The young man with purple eyes cheerfully says that everything is clean there and thinks with relief that they did not seem to notice that he was missing. At this time, he hears a high-ranking Awakened person on the phone, who asks what it means that unforeseen monster attacks are possible. Another Awakened woman with a high rank asks what's the matter. He replies that this is some kind of warning from the center, they didn't really explain anything. They only said that they noticed a bunch of monsters on the radar, but these monsters immediately disappear. They can't do anything right there. Akita Hikaru thinks that. Therefore, his battle with the boss was noticed by radars. Well, he'd better hide that magic stone from the thunder flying lizard for now. Soon, one of the awakened ones with a high rank announces that they will soon be fighting the dungeon boss. Is everyone ready? They tell him that everyone is ready. The man says that they will start the battle when they contact the other team. He dials Tyra's number and says that the Western team is ready to attack. Shindru Terra replies that Clean Water is also ready. The Awakened One from the Western team says that then they will launch an attack on the bosses at the appointed time. Shindru Terra replies a little absently that it's second to second and asks Rintero Nakamura if everyone is ready. At a given time, the East and West Wings will launch a simultaneous attack on the bosses, and Nakamura will be at the head of the team. The main task will be to catch the boss by surprise. Then they will connect and as a result, the success of the mission depends on him, let him not let them down. Nakamura Rintero excitedly replies to Mr. Terra that he will not let them down in any case. Terra Shidru says he's counting on Nakamura. One of the Awakened Ones tries to touch an incomprehensible device that stands in the tent, but he is stopped by the Awakened One with a ponytail who tells him not to touch this thing. He asks what it is all about. The girl is surprised that he does not know this and explains that this is a radar in case of unforeseen circumstances. If, for example, a monster of too high a level appears or if there are some useful things nearby and everything like that. Akita Hikaru thinks that they, it turns out, have such things, and no one has even told them about it. The Awakened One tells the girl that they have such a strong team that no unforeseen circumstances will interfere with them, and without the device everything will be noticed. The Awakened One with the ponytail cheerfully says that she hopes that this is really the case. When they leave, the Awakened One still gets to the radar, which suddenly begins to glow. It's time for the next stage of the operation to clean up the airport in Tokyo, the attack on the bosses of the dungeon. The teams gathered in the east and west wings of the dungeon. The action takes place in the far part of the west wing, the boss's habitat. The Awakened One stand in front of tall stones, behind which a fire is burning. There are many lizards hovering in the sky, which, noticing them, descend sharply. The leader orders the shields to be activated and the attack to begin, as the defending monsters are approaching. The Awakened with low ranks successfully cope with the defending monsters, but at this time the dungeon boss is activated. A black and blue window pops up, which says that the data has been updated and the dungeon boss has been discovered. A huge brown dragon appears, next to which hangs a black and blue window, which says that this is the boss of a dungeon called the Lava Dragon. He belongs to the dragon class, his character is hostile, his rank is A, his abilities are called Tail Strike and Teleportation. 
At this time, a new black and blue window pops up, which says that the dungeon data has been updated and the boss's strength has been increased. Akita Hikaru exclaims that he has really developed and become stronger. A special black and blue window pops up, which says that the name of this creature is an enhanced lava dragon. Its status is preparing to attack, its next action will be to use a skill called Lava Bomb. The Lava Dragon attacks, and the Awakened Ones run away at one point, shouting that he is too strong. One of them asks the girl with the ponytail if she thinks he's too aggressive. She replies that he attacks much more often and more strongly than the reports described. Something is definitely wrong here. Akita Hikaru assumes that suddenly he is so angry because he destroyed that secret boss, he apologizes for it. The team leader shouts that they cannot cope with him and need to retreat. The shield of one of the awakened low ranks begins to break and he falls to the ground. At this time, a black and blue window pops up, which says that the data has been updated and awakened Renka has been detected. The cards called Sea Warrior and Fire Warrior are activated, and the awakened ones exclaim that these are the same rank cards, did any of them have such abilities? Elite awakened ones from the Pure Water Company approach them, smiling amiably. Akita Hikaru is amazed to think that it's Terra and the rest of the team from the East Wing, but what are they doing here? One of the Awakened Ones exclaims that this is a team from Pure Water. But where are the Awakened Ones from the East Wing from? Nagachi Kenji exclaims irritably that they themselves sent them a signal for help. He does not understand anything. And Terra tries to explain to Shaidru, saying that they received a signal for help from their team. They decided that something unexpected had happened and immediately rushed to the West Wing to help. A high-ranking Awakened person shouts to see if someone from the low ranking has sent a distress signal. A chubby man with a low rank, laughing nervously, says that he must have pressed the wrong button. This is the awakened one who touched the radar. Shaidru Terra says that it seems they have some misunderstandings. Let them tell us how they are doing for now. The leader of the West Wing team says that the boss turned out to be too strong for them and they decided to retreat for a while. The chubby man nervously turns to the elite awakened, who is looking at him very strangely. Akita Hikaru wonders where Nakamura and his team are. A black and blue window pops up which says that the battle data has been updated, the West Wing has gone into retreat, and the boss battle is still ongoing in the East. Alkita Hikaru is horrified to think that the others are still fighting the boss, but there's only Nakamura's team there and abruptly takes off, while running. He thinks that if only he could make it, did Terra decide to frame Nakamura again? Soon he gets to the place of battle and sees the boss of the dungeon, next to which hangs a black and blue window, which says that this is the boss of the dungeon called the Whirlwind Dragon. He belongs to the Dragon class, his character is hostile, his rank is A, his abilities are called Tail Strike and Teleportation. The low-ranking Awakened Ones who are left here exclaim, Where did Mr. Terra go and shout to Commander Nakamura that the shields are no longer holding up? Nakamura Rintero shouts at them not to give up. As reinforcements are coming soon and thinks that he cannot retreat, he must endure all this so that Miho will be proud of him. The young man with golden eyes puts up a protective barrier again. A special black and blue window pops up, which says that the name of this creature is the Whirlwind Dragon. Its status is preparing to attack, its next action will be to use a skill called Air Explosion. The Whirlwind Dragon opens its mouth. At this time Akita Hikaru appears, who shouts at Nakamura to leave here with everyone. He turns around in amazement, but the Whirlwind Dragon attacks before the Awakened One does. A powerful explosion is heard, and low-ranking gate cards fall out of the air next to the young man with purple eyes. He picks up the one that belonged to Nakamura Rintero. All the moments with Nakamura flash before Akita Hikaru's eyes, and he desperately calls for the Azure Samurai's gate card, using a skill called Sky Piercing Blow. The monster falls to the ground, struck down by the blow, and the Awakened One, lowering his head, apologizes to a friend for not having time to help him with the boss. Why does he need this power at all if he still cannot protect the weak? The action takes place in the far part of the West Wing, the boss's habitat. One of the Awakened Ones says that the boss started behaving very strangely. At this time, the lava-enhanced dragon teleports away, and they say that something has happened to the boss in the East Wing. Shaidru Terra exclaims that it's a bad thing because some of the Awakened from his team are still there and they are now in great danger. The leader of the West Wing team says it's best for him and the rest of the Clean Water team to go back there. Shaidru Terra says that they will scout the situation in the East Wing, and then jointly discuss further actions and orders his men to prepare to return to the East Wing. The leader of the East Wing team triumphantly thinks that everything seems to have worked. Nakamura and the others have become an excellent victim. Their company's contribution to the battle with the bosses will undoubtedly be the greatest and their labors cannot but pay off. He did as Mr. Sarazawa wanted and believes that he has been promoted. The action takes place in the far part of the east wing of the airport in Tokyo, the boss's place of residence. A black and blue window pops up, 
which says that the data has been updated and the dungeon boss has teleported to it. Bakita Hikaru sadly tells the lava-enhanced dragon that he should forgive him, since he has already destroyed his friend, and he was in such a hurry to help him. He summons a dark double-headed serpent with a gate card and uses a skill called Rays of Dark Magic. He falls, struck down with one blow, and the awakened one bitterly thinks, clutching Rintero Nakamura's card in his hand, that there are things that even cards cannot return. Nakamura and the others, he never managed to save them. The action takes place in a surveillance location for an airport cleanup operation in Tokyo. Hiroshi Takasu demands a report on the situation in the dungeon. Hiko Iwasaki replies that the original plan did not work and now the teams are acting on their own. The awakened ones in the east wing have split into two groups and one of them has now arrived in the west wing, but they have just lost the signal from the part of the team that remained in the east wing. Now they also lost the signal from the boss in the east wing, and the boss from the west wing teleported to the east. Hiroshi Takasu exclaims what is going on there at all, did the cleanup fail again? What kind of mess is going on here? You need to immediately assemble a squad of awakened and send them to help in the dungeon. At this time, the signal from the boss from the west wing disappears, and one of the employees says that they no longer see signs of activity from the bosses. The man with the blue hair exclaims that there really is another malfunction in the system, what is going on there at all? He puts on a suit and orders everyone to move to the scene of action. On the way, they meet Okita Hikaru, who is returning from the dungeon, and Takasu Hiroshi wonders how he ended up here while there is a boss fight in the dungeon, or he did not take part in the cleanup, but there shouldn't be any like that here. The action takes place in the West Wing. The dungeon abruptly takes on the usual appearance of an airport, and the awakened exclaim in surprise that the dungeon has been cleared. How did it happen? Because the boss has just teleported away from them. Who could possibly defeat such a strong monster in a few seconds? Even though the clear water was just heading east, did they really defeat the dungeon boss? They tell him that they are here. And indeed, the team from the clean water company did not have time to go far. Ryoko Hariyama tells Mr. Terra that it seems that everything did not go according to plan at all. But they didn't have time to do anything. So why did the dungeon suddenly disappear? Terra Shidru is horrified to think that Akita has managed to clean up the dungeon again. But no, he was on the West Wing team. There was no way he could have gotten to the East Wing of the airport before they did. Naguchi Kenji and Ryoko Hariyama try to call out to the leader, but he doesn't listen to them, wondering if anyone could have defeated two strong bosses in such a short time. It's bad, very bad. Breaking news. The government reports that the underground of the airport in Tokyo has finally been cleared and the building has returned to its former appearance. Alkita Hikaru thinks that he destroyed three bosses and saved the airport in Tokyo, but he could not save Nakamura. The news says that Tokyo Airport has been restored to its former appearance, but the name of the hero is unknown. The Clean Water Company made an unsuccessful attempt to fight the bosses. There are seven victims. A real disaster, as a result of actions that directly contradicted the original tactics of the operation to clean up the airport dungeon in Tokyo, the Clean Water Company lost seven novice awakened ones. The struggle of giant companies for supremacy in the market of dungeon cleaning services has led to another tragedy and the deaths of ordinary full-time employees who have nothing to do with this economic race. News The aggressive approach of companies to clearing dungeons has been questioned for a very long time. How long has it been since the awakened beginners were in the worst working conditions? Updated today, 4.42 p.m. Although the cleanup of the Tokyo Airport dungeon was completed successfully, at the moment, an investigation is still ongoing regarding the losses during the battle. According to the report of the Awakened Research Department, there are currently seven victims, and all of them are young aspiring awakened who worked for the clean water company. Akita Hikaru receives a call from Makiko Akita, his mother, and asks if she is watching TV now. If she has heard about the airport, yes, he was there too. He's perfectly fine. Nakamura and his entire team were killed. If only he had arrived earlier. If he cannot protect the weak with his strength, then why does he need this power at all? Why? The crowd is talking about whether it is still unknown who the one who cleared this dungeon is. They heard that a lot of money was promised for the cleanup, but the reward has not yet been paid to anyone. But what about the rest of the participants in the operation? Because it's pretty unfair. Weren't there too many victims if there were so many professionals from the best companies on the job who knew that everything would turn out this way? And he knew that in these large companies people are treated like things. The action takes place in the main office of the clean water company. Enraged, Koji Sarazawa walks down the corridor. Thinking about what a fool Terra is, what he has done, he has ruined all his plans. He is hailed by executive director Takeda, asking what he has done. He thought his team could handle the cleanup, but instead he lost as many as seven of their young employees. Sarazawa Koji tries to justify himself by saying that they all had only F rank. All seven people were weak awakened. Executive director Takeda says that because of Sarazawa, 
Their company's rating has dropped to an unprecedented level before. He hopes that the meeting will take his opinion into account when the issue comes to changing his position. They all know what Sarazawa spends the company's money on. The man in the green suit looks at his interlocutor in horror, and when he leaves, he says that all his past achievements are no longer taken into account. From now on he acts exclusively in accordance with his position and no indulgences. Sarazawa Koji clenches his fists in rage and thinks that he has already lost Takeda's support, and at this rate he will lose everything soon. At this time, he receives a message from Kurokawa who writes that he is stopping their personal meetings for a while and asks to do without visits. The man is horrified and thinks that Kurokawa has turned away from him. They all leave him one by one. He had enough problems. Let Tyra deal with what he had done, but if he failed again, he would have to resort to a backup option. The action takes place outside in the rain. Yuriko Seki, who is hiding from the downpour under the roof, suddenly notices Akita Hikaru and joyfully rushes to him, saying that she is very glad to see him. They have not received any information for so long that they began to worry about him and the others. Instead of answering, the young man with purple eyes hands her a map of Nakamura's gate. The girl asks why she needs it. Did Nakamura die in that dungeon? Akita Hikaru says it's his fault and apologizes for it. With that, he turns around and walks away without answering Yuriko Seki, who asks in vain what happened in the dungeon. She looks after the awakened one for a long time and thinks that the victims are Nakamura and his team, but why doesn't Akita want to tell anything? On the day of the funeral of Nakamura Rintero and his team, it rained all day without stopping. Yuriko Seki and Miho Heiskawa are crying in an embrace on a bench, and Akita Hikaru stands next to a photo of Nakamura Rintero, surrounded by many chrysanthemums with rosaries in her hands and thinks why only the weak always suffer. They go to the battlefield instead of the elite and they have to fight those monsters that even a strong professional cannot always cope with, and in the end, they die. If only he had more power. On the day he received his power, the mysterious room saved him from death and gave him the ability to control a deck of the strongest cards, such as the dark two-headed serpent, the goddess protector, the teacher of black magic, the lady of the winds, the azure samurai. The gate cards from the deck are also not ordinary, incredibly strong and so, they are still improved after each battle and new skills are revealed to him, such as a ring of moonlight, rain that crushes stone, triple strike, blade dance, lightning attacks, black lightning. In addition, he can now see all the opponent's moves thanks to his new vision. Thanks to this power, he can destroy any dungeon bosses with one blow. The boss of the dungeon called the Royal Goblin. He belongs to the humanoid class, his character is hostile, his rank is C. The boss of the dungeon is called Centaur. He belongs to the humanoid class, his character is hostile, his rank is B. His abilities are called Swift Attack, Rampage, Hammer of Fate. The boss of the dungeon called the Royal Goblin is a spearman. He belongs to the humanoid class, his character is hostile, his rank is C+. The boss of a dungeon called Lava Dragon. He belongs to the dragon class, his character is hostile, his rank is A. His abilities are called Tail Strike and Teleportation. The boss of the dungeon is called the Whirlwind Dragon. He belongs to the dragon class, his character is hostile, his rank is A. His abilities are called Tail Strike and Teleportation. The boss of the dungeon is called the Thunder Flying Lizard. He belongs to the dragon-like class, his character is hostile, his rank is a plus, his abilities are called tail strike, capture, lightning flash, teleportation. But why did he get all this, some weakling whose strength does not even reach the F rank? Before he could only obediently follow orders and endure, maybe that's the reason. Maybe he got the power just because he's not special at all, he's the same as them, he's the same as those low-ranking guys who weren't put in anything. He was chosen as if on behalf of all awakened low ranks. He received the power to help all the weak, so that he could do things on behalf of all those who do not have magical power or have too little of it. He will not allow any more deaths. Now he has something to fight for. Akita Hikaru turns around and walks away, ignoring Yuriko Seki's calls. Hiroshi Takasu, standing against the wall, says that Serizawa did not even attend the funeral of his employee. What impudence on his part and asks who is there, pointing to the young man with purple eyes. Hiko Iwasaki opens the awakened base and says that this is Hikaru Akita, who was awarded the lowest rank, F, according to the data. He was one of the participants in the cleanup of the airport in Tokyo. A month ago, he was listed as one of the employees of Clean Water, and now, it seems, he has decided to provide private dungeon cleaning services. She exclaims that this guy really cleared eight dungeons in two weeks but there are no reports on activities at the airport. Takasu Hiroshi says that although this man has quit, he may still have something to do with what happened. First, they need to find out Serizawa's exact plans, because he is clearly involved in the incident, and he'll catch him red-handed. Iriko Seki calls out to Takasa Hiroshi, and Kiko Iwasaki is surprised to ask if they know each other. The man with blue hair replies that they also met at a funeral last time. 
The action takes place in the main office of the clean water company. There are a lot of cameramen and journalists scurrying around the building. Sarazawa Koji looks down at them and says that they are circling here like vultures. He turns to the elite awakened rank and asks how they are going to explain the situation that has developed through their fault. Could it be that they, the elite awakened rank, eh, are not able to carry out normal sweeps on their own? Shai Drew Tara speaks up, and Naguchi Kenji looks at him in horror. The team leader says that they would have been able to carry out the sweep well, but they acted on the instructions of Chief Sarazawa. The man in the green suit takes him at his word and exclaims indignantly, which means he believes it's his fault. Well, then let them show him their brilliant tactics in action and act completely on their own now. He gives them five days, and if they don't do anything worthwhile during that time, he'll fire them all. After the elite awakened Ranka leaves Sarazawa Koji's office, Naguchi Kenji calls out to Tara and asks what it was just now and it is necessary to apologize to the boss without the slightest subordination. Tyra Shaidru replies that he knows the boss and there is no way to get off with apologies alone. Their only chance not to fly out of here will be to find and bring the magic stones of the bosses who could not be found and thinks that if he is fired from pure water, for sure all those whom he framed will start following him. Or even even worse. Akita. This is definitely his doing. We need to take the magic stones of the bosses from him as soon as possible. The most important thing is to prevent him from using that dragon card. 